Josh's game. Uh, you know, we, we uh, Silicaga should win this ball game. I mean, they've been off to a, re a really nice start tonight or uh, this season, Grady. But uh, and and you know, uh, Coach Griffith seems to think that his kids have have got. I mean, his team's got all the tools they need to to be successful this year and possibly even challenge for that region title. Of course, Beauregard and Central Clay County are going to have something to say about that. But, uh, you know, tonight I, I like the Aggies on the road at uh, at Lincoln. I like the Aggies in this one as well. I think they're a pretty pretty good football team, though I'd still think they're probably the third best in that region, Brandon. I agree. Uh, you know, the last week they beat me with Aniston, so now I think, you know, Tillicaga's going to go into Lincoln. Well, and jumping on the bandwagon? Jumping on the jumping bandwagon. Jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. All right. Cherokee County is at Hoax Bluff, and we got this listed as a big one, but you know, let's take a look at this. Hoax Bluff really put it together last year. They, they were within an eyelash of making it to the state championship game down in Auburn last season. They got a big win last week over Southside Gas from 30 to 7, dominated them. The Warriors 0-2, and they got hammered last week by Piedmont. I don't know how big a, this is big for Cherokee County because maybe their season might be over at this point if they get beat again. They will. Hope Spot's going to take care of business. They're for real. Yeah, I think the Eagles are going to win this one as well, Grady, and I agree with you. I think it's a big one more for Cherokee County than for Hoax Bluff. Hoax Bluff, of course, doesn't want to go to sleep on this, but Cherokee County has just, it seems like they've struggled the first couple of games, and boy, when you start a season 0-3, it's hard to recover. Yeah, no question about that, and I think that's exactly where they are headed for. This is another rivalry game. That, you know, when you look at this game before the season starts, you're thinking, man, this is a this is a gym right here, Jacksonville at Sacks. But well, the season has not started that well for the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. They're 0 and 2. They got handled rather easily last week by Alexandria. Sacks is a much improved team. In fact, a lot of people are picking them to make a deep run in the playoffs this year. And oh yeah, there's that little revenge factor after that 63-24 drubbing they took at the hands of Coach Clint Smith and the Jacksonville Golden Eagles last year. There is a whole lot of pieces to this puzzle of course Clint Smith the former coach at uh, Sachs we, we know him well we have a great lawnmower story but we won't get into that tonight uh, and uh, of course goes up to Jacksonville and you know Grady they've been kind of hot and cold since he went up there you know they just can't seem to, to find a stride they can stay within and I think Jonathan Miller if he gets a chance tonight I think him and the Wildcats will, will absolutely drub uh, the, the Golden Eagles and Brandon I think the Wildcats will have a chance to, not to do that tonight because I think Sachs wins this one and I think they win big. I think so too. Uh, going, like you said, they're going to go deep in the playoffs. They're not going to take it lightly. Another really interesting matchup. Dadeville is at Munford now. This is a very interesting game but in that Munford has only played one game. They lost a close one, a heartbreaker on the road at Central Clay County. Dadeville coming up one of the good teams in this region and these two teams have had some really good matchups in the last few years. I, I think Munford is a pretty darn good football team and I think they're going to be a real threat in that region. So I think I like Munford at home tonight but it's a game I think that they have to get by if they want to have any hope of really being competitive in this region. You know, Grady, I don't know that there's a game in this region that you can lose, you know? I mean, it, it's just such... I mean, it's just stacked top to bottom, and you, you've got better teams in the region than you've got spots available for the playoffs, and you know, somebody's going to be on the outside looking in. And, you know, just like last year, this region went down to the very last game of the, the season to determine, you know, where everybody was, was going to stack up. But I like the lines tonight. I, I think Munford is much better than – then they're getting props for right now. They should have beaten Central Clay County. How many times have we said that before? But, you know, to go down there and, and shoulda, coulda, woulda, I just think Munford's a good football team, and I, I think Dadeville's going to come up on the short end tonight at Lyons Stadium. I agree. Dave was on the road. Munford had a week to prepare. Uh, I think it's going to be close up to about the fourth quarter, and Munford's going to pull it out a close one. So we're all in agreement on everybody so far. We all like Munford. Tallahassee is at Hanley. And, uh, this, this one. <laughs> well, Tallahassee is this one, big boy. Tallahassee is the only team that beat them last year. Uh, on, in route, uh, only team that beat them in the state of Alabama that counted in the route to a state championship for the Hanley Tigers. But, you know, Tallahassee is the team I've heard a lot of talk about in this region in the offseason. Hanley is a very young team. They're, they've got speed, but they don't have a lot of experience. And I, I think that showed in their opening loss to Callaway, Caraway, Georgia. Yeah, I think so, too. And, 
you know, the, the one thing that's interesting about Tallahassee Grady is they're far enough away from us where we really don't hear a lot about them day to day like we do even Leeds, which is just up the interstate. I guess it's because it's between Calhoun County and Birmingham that we, but Tallahassee, you know, you're, you're almost down in Montgomery there with them. And we just don't hear a lot about them day in and day out. But I think they're one of the teams to beat in this region. And the, the team that loses, you know, the home games in this region are the ones you can't lose. So you got to think Hanley's got to find a way to win tonight. I agree. Hanley's going to take care of business. He tells he's on the road. And now after talking to Leeds coach Gibson, you know, he's worried about Hanley. So I think Hanley is going to take care of business. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm taking Tallahassee on this one. I think Hanley lost a lot last year, and I think Tallahassee's got a lot coming back. And I like them on the road tonight to upset the defending state Class 4A champs. All right, the one we've got right here tonight, Randolph County is at Ohatchee. We talked earlier about this, and, you know, I, I think there are a lot of question marks with this Ohatchee football team given who they lost last year. And I think Randolph County, they are the, they're kind of the everybody's favorite coming into the region this year with the, all the experience that they come back off of last year, bringing back basically the entire team. But I will temper that by saying that New England was being talked about going 19-0 and up until last night on the NFL. <laughs> well, you know, Grady, what did we say about Randolph County last year when we saw them lose at Piedmont? We said it was the best team we saw lose a game last year. Uh, you know, I think we've got a really, really good team here and it's going to be hard to, to, to know just exactly where Ohatchee stands up until we see them play a good team. Is Randolph County that good? Well, I don't know. And that's kind of why we're here tonight. We're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on and, you know, which one of these teams belongs because whichever one of them wins, you know who they got to chase, don't you? The Piedmont Bulldogs. So uh, with the national anthem playing here in the background, we're getting ready to play uh, football tonight. Two really good programs, two well-coached teams. Uh, you know, you got Ohatchee coming off a, a semifinal run last year. Boy, what Scott Martin has done with this program is, is nothing short of, of really, really special. You're right, Tim. It was talking about, you know, it's kind of he's worried about Scott Martin, Coach Martin at Ohatchee. He's got his scheme, and he knows he's a good coach. So it is going to be a, a tough one. Well, it's a tough matchup for any team because of this Red Eagle offense, and they run it so darn well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I think that's going to be the key for Randolph County. Can they stop it? One little note on Randolph County, and we didn't mention this earlier, but, you know, Jim, when they came in here last year, uh, it was Andrew Prestridge who was the starting quarterback for this Tiger team. Yeah, not Coach, tonight. Not tonight. He has moved to safety and receiver, and tonight it will be Brody Wortham, who is also a senior. But uh, I think Coach Prestridge, Brandon, just thought like that was a better fit for, for Andrew. It was. You know, that's uh, they're kind of related there. So uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure he made his decision based on his uh, athleticism and thought he'd be better for the team at uh, receiver to, uh, tonight. Well, we're just a couple of minutes, uh, a few minutes, I should say, away from the kickoff for tonight's matchup. Teams are starting to make their way. Captains are making their way down the sideline here, and we're just about ready for some football. Why don't we take a look at the top tens in all classifications as we get ready for the coin toss. Our head official tonight is Jimmy Buckle, who will be joining him momentarily. Over Class 7A, it is Central Phoenix City still riding on top. Hoover is still right there. And I know Hewitt Trustful is a team that uh, Jim has seen, and I know, Jim, you're real high on them. Yeah, Grady, I really think Hewitt Trustful Trustful is gonna gonna go long into into November. I'm not sure they they're good enough to win it all over a Central Phoenix City or a Hoover. You know, a lot of people are talking about Thompson too, but I I, I just don't see them in the same class. But Hewitt Trustful, the Huskies are for real, and I think you're going to see them uh, contend for the. Uh, the uh, 7A crown this season. Let's take a look at Class 6A. And, of course, one team that really stands out of there for those of us in this area, that is the Oxford Yellow Jackets. Huh. And, uh, boy, they have been nothing short of extremely impressive in their opening two wins of the season. You know, they really have, and I don't see anybody testing them the rest of the way, to be honest with you. I really think their only challenge is Benjamin Russell on the road at the Sportsplex later in the year. 
Uh, other than that, it's just Oxford's responsibility to get better week in and week out just by playing other people and, you know, don't stumble along the way. And for goodness sakes, don't lose the first round of the playoffs because, oh. you know, that's what happened last year. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're they just too good to do that. Yeah, no doubt about that. Class 5A and, of course, Beauregard, the defending state champs, but they fell to Greenville last week. Greenville has jumped up to seventh in that. Alexandria, we talked about earlier, sitting at number three in that poll. Central Clay County down at number 10. Interesting to note whether that is where, where that will fall as we get a few weeks deeper into the season. Let's take a look right now. As we get ready for the coin toss, Class 4A, there you see Leeds, who we saw last week. Good-looking team, Handy. We'll find out a lot about them and Tallahassee tonight uh, as those two teams meet. We talked about that earlier in our big ones. Class 3A this week, it is Mobile Christian. Piedmont sitting at number two. This Ohatchee team at third. And Randolph County, the ninth-ranked team in the state in Class 3A. We'll put those other classes up and let you take a look at those. But right now, the captains are heading out to midfield. Our head official tonight is Jimmy Buckaloo. Jimmy always does a good job. We, we saw him officiate a number of games last year. Let's join Jimmy Buckaloo here at midfield for our coin toss. Captains, you're in charge of your team. If I have a foul, I will explain your options, okay? Listen close. Have a good sportsmanship. Play hard. Play safe, okay? Black, step here. I have a coin that's got a flag on it. That's that's heads. That's heads. What is your choice? Heads. Heads? Heads. If I drop it, we'll do it again. Heads. And it is heads. It's heads. You won the toss. You can receive, defend, or defer. Receive. Wait, defer, defer. You want to defer. Why does one the toss and they have deferred? You'll take the ball, you'll kick toward the scoreboard or defend the scoreboard? Defend scoreboard. Put you back to the scoreboard, face the scoreboard. Here you have it. Jimmy Bucklew filling this in. Ohatchee will get the ball first. And off County winning the toss and electing to defer their option to the second half, which is pretty much the popular trend these days. And uh, at every level of football, it's deferring the option most of the time. I wonder why that is. Well, you figure if you can come out and get a stop on defense, you get field position, and then you get the ball in the second half. And I think a lot of teams just feel like that's momentum. I'd want to receive and see what I could do. Depends on my offense. Uh, I don't think Ohatchee will be disappointed. Randolph County taking the field in the new look silver helmets this year for the Tigers and the silver trousers as we see across the way. And now the Indians getting set there in some of their traditional red jerseys and white pants tonight. Notice that while we were walking down on the other end of the field. And the atmosphere out here is electric tonight. We feel like we've got a good matchup. And I feel like we're going to learn a lot about both of these teams. And we're going to have a pretty good handle on which one of these teams comes out of this tonight really contending for this region championship. I know what everybody's been asking me all week. Who's going to win? I don't know. <laughs> I really can't say. Uh, it's, it's hard to uh, pick a winner. It's so early in the season. We have a lot of talk about teams, but a lot of teams have only played at this point one game that counted, and, and at most a couple. So I don't think you're far enough in to get a read now. Now you're starting to get into the part of the schedule when region play starts tonight, and now we'll get a good idea of pretenders, and contenders, and that'll start to sort itself out over the next few weeks. But hey, when you're when you're looking at a, a region like this in, in Region Five and Class Three A, you are talking about a lot of teams that are going to be in the hunt. It's like Jim mentioned with the Four A region we were talking about with Munford and, and Hanley in that region, in Region Three there, you may have more good teams than you have playoff spots. Yeah, that's true. Do you think this is really going to if the the loser of this game is going to have a hard time playing catch up? I think it puts them at a disadvantage. No, I don't think either one of these teams are, are out of it by any means if they lose tonight. But I, I think for one of them, it signals, hey, we're somebody to really be reckoned with in this region. And for the other one, it probably leaves a little bit of head scratching and going, okay, exactly where are we? What do we got to do? I think I, I'm not going to be surprised to see both of these teams make the playoffs. I mean, I, I think this region oh, has got really good teams in it. So a loss is not going to kill you. But but I certainly think it's really important to get a win. And if you're Randolph County, you come up here and get a win on the road, then, man, that puts you miles ahead of the game because now you get to go home and play Piedmont. And if you were to win that at home, then you are looking good early on in this one because you would have taken out two of the top teams in the region. That's true. That's what Coach was talking about earlier in the week. He, this is just a gut check game for him. It'll be Andrew Prestridge kicking it off for 
Randolph County and back deep. It is Cam McCombs to receive it for Ohatchee. It's a squib kick. McCombs will gather it in. And now he'll make his way back over to the right side, looking back up the middle, and he's going to be dropped right there. Good downfield tackle that time for the Tigers. That is number 77, T.J. Sims. He is a junior and uh, starts at right defensive tackle for the Tigers. Yeah, Sims being an 11th grader, he sniffed that one out and planted him right there where we'll be starting first and 10. So first and 10 for the Indians. They'll have the ball out on their own 21-yard line. Grayson Aldworth is your quarterback tonight for the Indians. He wears number 11. He'll operate out of that shotgun, that Red Eagle. Going to run it to the near side. And good start for the Indians. Sellers with a big run. He's out across the 40, out near the 42-yard line before he is corralled. That. And he is taken down there by Dante Davenport for the Tigers. Looked like Randolph County was just doing some arm, not, not really tackling there, just kind of bumping them and not really wrapping them up on that play. But they would have got them uh, pretty much uh, back there at the line of scrimmage if they well, just tackled. This Red Eagle offense, you know, they run it at five. And Coach Martin went up there and learned this offense because of the players that he has here at Ohatchee. So, you know, he custom fit this offense to his players. So, and they are pretty darn good at running it. And I think it's pretty tough to defense. All were. Gets the play in from the sideline. Sellers will trot over and get on that left side this time. Dominic Thomas flanks all the way to the right. Thomas will get his first carry running left. Got a block out here. Got another block. Lowers the head, and he's going to have it out across the midfield and into Tiger territory down at the 49-yard line. C.J. Pinkard on the stop that time for the Tigers. Trying to make it to the outside, and he got it. I mean, that was a good run. Well, Thomas got the head of steam, and the offensive line thus far on those first two plays have looked pretty darn good for the Indians. They'll mark that ball right at midfield, give him a gain of seven, make it second down and three right now for the Indians. They're opening possession of this one, and it's been a nice-looking drive to this point. Thomas again will sit to the right, and he's going to get another carry running left again, looking to the wide side, strung out well this time, and dropped for maybe a yard loss as that was a good defensive play out there that time by Dante Davenport. Got him by the jersey and just pulled him down. Yeah, Dante Havenport, the 12th grader, they wrapped him up and got him uh, right there at the line of scrimmage. So maybe call it a half a yard loss. We'll call it third down and four now for the Indians. Ball just shy now of the midfield stripe. Just underway here from the Creek Bank, and the Indians like to run the football. I'll be interested to see if their passing game of course, they don't even have anybody split out right now. Sellers with the fake to him now. Rolling right as already. He's got pressure. Slips a tackle. Fires it down the middle. Got a man. Completes. And it is a first down for the Indians. Wide open coming across the middle that time. That was number 32. Or make that 33. Adamson it makes this catch. And it's first and 10 for the Indians. Adamson, another 12th grader for the Indians. And he broke free and was able to pick up the first down. I was just going to say, I wonder what the passing game will look like this year with Allward at the quarterback position. He looked like he had a pretty good arm on that pass. He sure did. And had some time, did a nice job of rolling out and buying a little extra time, did Allward that time. So an impressive opening drive for this Indians team. Allward again with Thomas. And they're going to hand it off. That is Sellers looking for room, trying to cut it back up the middle. And that time, a good job by that Tiger defense just clogging up the interior. Looked like leading the charge there was Aaron Knight, a junior, out of that linebacker position for the Tigers. Yeah, that hole just kind of collapsed on him right there. There was nowhere to go. Second long. No gain on that one, so it is a second down and 10. First time we've seen Ohanchi be behind the sticks, so to speak, on second down. They did have done a nice job thus far on this drive and picking up good yardage on first and 10. And really, this is a team that is built to pick up three or four yards on first down. They get to Thomas. All we're going to put it in the air for the second time tonight. And again, right on the money as he has got Sellers right down the middle of the field. And it's another first and 10 for the Indians. Wright makes the stop that time for the Tigers. You know, this is really dangerous for them to be connected this early, not overthrowing or anything. He's hitting him right in the numbers for the football, picking up first down. What I'm seeing so far is an offense that's a little more diverse. It looks like the passing game is going to be a real threat for this team this year. And uh, that could spell trouble for some. I'm very impressed with Allwood's arm so far in this opening drive. His passes have been spot on. And mixing it up real good, too. So first and 10 for the Indians. They took this ball with their own 21 and have steadily marched it downfield. Here's Thomas looking up the middle. Going to have some positive yardage stacked up in there in that interior by that Tiger defense. A host of Tigers have him. Looks like on the bottom of the pile there. See E.J. Clark, number 30. He is a senior defensive end for Randolph County. Yeah, he got about, what, about three yards. Yeah. Just second down. 
Second and seven coming up for the Indians. But they don't mind three yards on first down. That kind of sets them up to be able to do whatever they want with this offense. Well, that passive game we just seen, I don't think they're going to have any problems. We'll see if uh, Randolph County can answer for it. It has been impressive so far for the Indians. Allward takes a snap, going to give it to Sellers, going to run it to this left side again. And he cuts it, makes a man miss a tackle, and he's finally going to be forced out of bounds and down. And making the stop that time for Randolph County, Trey Terrell, another senior on this Tiger squad, and gets about four. Looks like Randolph County's kind of settling in their defense a little bit and understanding what kind of uh, offense Ohechi's trying to run at them here. So third and long, third and about four, third and three. 16 yard line. They've got it down to the 16 with a third and three now. Possession down for the Indians. Hand it to Thomas right up the gut. And he's going to be stacked up, falls forward, but did not get his first down. He's going to be close. He's down to the 14. He's going to come up about a yard shy. So it is a decision time right now for Coach Martin and the Indians as they're going to be short of the line to gain. They're going to have fourth down in a yard or so. And let's see what the Indians will elect to do here. I'm sure they'll just pound it on in there and pick up their oh, first We've got down. a penalty flag down on the field right now. So Jimmy Buckaloo was talking with the Indians captain. So we've got a penalty flag. Let's see what that is. That's a big call perhaps in this drive because I'm not sure what they would have had to do. Maybe Randolph County lines up offside. So let's see. We have an illegal tough substitution on the defense. It's a five yard penalty. It results in a first down. Now that's a big mistake. That is. But you know, I kind of got a feeling O'Hatch was going to pick up the first down anyway, being that close. It would have been fourth and one. It certainly would have been gut check time for both of them. But as it is, that's a first down. They're at the 11. They can still get a first down without getting it into the end zone. So first down and 10 for the Indians at the 11. Give it to Thomas. Cutting it up, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Still keeps those feet moving. Breaks out of there. Thomas cuts it back in the middle. Dives forward, and he's down inside the five, down near the three-yard line. Dante Davenport finally gets him on the ground, but what a run by Dominique Thomas. You know, you always hear, keep them feet moving, keep them feet moving, and as sure as the world, he broke loose and was able to cut around the left side and picked up a more positive yardage. They're marking down at the six, so that's a gain of five, and it'll be second down for the Indians. Remember, they can pick up a first down at the one or just inside the Randolph County one, and Eating up a lot of this first quarter clock. Here is Albert. He's going to keep it for the first time. Albert dances forward. He's got positive yards, and he is going to be down close to his first down. Grayson Albert on the keeper that time. Brought down by Richard Bledsoe, the senior line lineman for Randolph County. It's going to be third and short. Like you said, they can still pick up the first down. Yeah, it is half a yard or so on the third down right now for Ohatchee. And we are approaching the six-minute mark, so Ohatchee has owned the football for half of this first quarter on this opening drive. Impressive, impressive opening drive. Thomas has got it, cuts it back up, dives forward. Not in the end zone, but may have his first down. We'll see. We'll depend on the spot. I think he got it. Officials will depend on the spot, and they may have to bring the chains in for this one. Jimmy Buckaloo signals, and indeed we will bring the chains across. And we just don't have an angle where I'm even going to guess at that. He only needed a half yard. So you got to feel pretty good about his chances of maybe getting it. I think we'll have the measurement here coming across the chains. Great officiate crew tonight, too. I've worked with Jimmy many times in some ball games. Yeah, Jimmy's one of the good, one of the real veterans in this, in officials, and he does a great job. We, we saw him referee a lot of games last year that we did, and he does have it by about half the length of the football, as you see there. So this drive is going to continue for the Indians, and it is going to eat up over half of quarter number one. I think all you got to do is just give it to Thomas and let him pound it in the end zone if it was me. Well, I think if you're Coach Scott Martin and the Indians, I don't think this game could have started much better than it has to this point. A long, time-consuming drive, and you're, you're knocking on the door of getting points. And it looks like we have got the heat timeout that has been given, so let's grab a quick timeout. It is the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Boss, you need the right machines. The right machine is a new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR side-by-side. -side. Quality fit and finish and all this cabin space. The 
maneuvers like you wouldn't believe. The new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR, the strongest, because I said so. See the full line today at Talladega Cycle Sales on Highway 21 in Talladega or online at talladegacyclesales.com. First and goal for the Ohatchee Indians, 541 in this opening quarter. So the Indians have owned it for more than half of quarter one, trying to cash that in to pay dirt here. Albert's going to take the snap, got Thomas again, steps in the end zone, touchdown Indians. They draw first blood, and that is a perfect start to a big football game for the Ohatchee Indians. That hole opened up over on the right side, and he was just able to stroll right into the end zone. I was really surprised that Randolph County didn't try to Fog that up a little bit better, but it was a nice size hole. I could see the creek bank from here. Gage Harrell will be on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Josh Lipham. And obviously, Ohatchee looks a lot like the Ohatchee last year with a, with a little caveat. They can throw the football. So the Indians start real strong tonight. There's a low kick by Harrell, and that is no good. So it'll stay 6 nothing. Let's take a look at the replay here, Brandon, on that touchdown run. You see not anything fancy there. They're just lining up power football. So you saw Thomas, big hole by the offensive line, dives it into the end zone, and Ohatchee cashes in a perfect drive to start the game. They lead it 6 to nothing. It is the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Advantage Tire on Highway 202 is the trusted name for tires and wheels in the Anniston area. You'll find the best tire service around. Plus, they do brake work and alignments. It doesn't matter what you're driving, you'll find the best selection of tires or wheels to suit your needs at even better prices from local folks you've trusted for years. And Advantage Tire is well known for their fast, friendly service. Call ahead or just come on by and see Bruce and the pros at Advantage Tire on Highway 202 today. Harold getting set to kick it deep for Ohatchee. Back deep for Randolph County. It looks like number 14, Trey Terrell, is back there. Also number one is Trent Lane. So it'll be the Tigers going on offense for the first time tonight to see if they can answer that opening drive for Ohatchee. Extra point missed. We'll see if that has any effect later in the game. Harold. Boots it high and end over end, and it's going to be fielded by Lane. And Lane's coming right back up the gut with it. Got some room. There goes Lane. He is may go. Lane right down the middle of the field. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Tigers. Wow. We are tied. Did he get in? No, he's short. They ran him down just short of the goal line, laying out, and making the dive was an Ohatchee Indian. Let's take a look at the replay as Trent Lane very decisive on that kickoff return. It was a high, deep kick. Lane, and Lane, Lane. just kind of took it right here, and uh, he just started pounding away, and he didn't even cut. He just went straight up the pike, and nobody could touch him till right there at the end zone. And yeah, I'm trying like to number, see. Who was that, number nine? Grabbed him right there at the end. And Riker Lambert got him, and that looked like, wow, that was close to falling in the end zone and the ball coming out. But they're going to mark him just short of the goal line, so we're not tied yet. But if you're Ohatchee, all of that work, you use up half the first quarter, and then one play, Randolph County is right there. A lot of unexpecteds there. He just kind of blasted right through the yeah, hole. I would love to see the end of that play again when he went down just to see if the ball crossed the goal line there or if he was actually fumbled that ball into the end zone. Brody Wortham, your quarterback, senior, going to turn, going to hand it off, and in the end zone with ease is... Ontario Hester, the junior, and it's a touchdown for the Tigers, and we are tied at six just like that. Pretty much the same thing as Ohatchee. Randy just went right off the left tackle and strode it in. There. So tied at six, and we'll see if that extra point matters here in just a second because Randolph County's got a chance to take the lead on to handle the extra point. Will be Buck Hurd. He is a junior, number 53 for the Tigers, and they've got a chance to take the lead. After just getting a little shell shocked by that opening drive by Ohatchee, that kick is up, and that one is good. Randolph County jumps out of the lead after an electric kickoff return by Trent Lane. Tigers lead it here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week.
Advantage Tire on Highway 202 is the trusted name for tires and wheels in the Anniston area. You'll find the best tire service around. Plus, they do brake work and alignments. It doesn't matter what you're driving, you'll find the best selection of tires or wheels to suit your needs at even better prices from local folks you've trusted for years. And Advantage Tire is well known for their fast, friendly service. Call ahead or just come on by and see Bruce and the pros at Advantage Tire on Highway 202 to today well we played five minutes and seven seconds of this football game and we've got two touchdowns on the board but the teams did it in very different fashion ohatchee with a long time consuming drive of 79 yards it consumed most of the first half of the quarter actually all of the first half of the quarter missed the extra point randolph county with a kickoff return inside the Ohatchee one yard line by Trent Lane. One play there in the end zone. Extra point good. And just like that, the Tigers lead it. Now Prestridge will kick it deep another time for the Tigers. Moves on the ball. This time he's going to kick a bit of a line drive. That's going to be fielded by Combs. Back inside the 10 yard line. Combs is going to have it out. Loses the football. Randolph County's got it. Tigers fall on the football after a big hit on Combs. And like that, the Tigers are in business. Making the recovery is E.J. Clark. You cannot have a turnover in a game like this. I mean, that was just, uh, I can't tell if it got punched out here. At least we can see the replay. And yeah, we'll watch the replay on this one, and that's a big turnover. Combs brings it back, and he's just a collision yeah, right the there. Look at that. on the football. Trying to see. That's 77 who made the tackle. C.J. Sims with a big hit. And then it was, again, E.J. Clark who makes the recovery. And it'll be Randolph County with the ball first down and 10 yards to go. Deep in Ohatchee territory inside the 25. Lane's got it again, breaks it to the outside. Speed going to be forced out of bounds across the way by Sellers and Allward. But he's going to have a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Randolph County Tigers. He just turned on the Jets and hit the outside, and he was gone. Pick up the first down. Ohatchee didn't have no answer for him. Boy, as impressive as it started for Ohatchee, it's just like lightning in a bottle right now for Randolph County, and they're in position to extend this lead. I'm afraid that field goal miss is going to come back and sting Ohatchee later on. Yeah, the extra points are always tough when you miss those. First to goal down at the Ohatchee six-yard line. Here is the Gibbs, riding right up the middle, not finding much, though, keeping the feet moving, now drilled. And picks up a couple. That's going to be about it. Carrying the football that time. That is Aaron Knight. And he is taken down by Austin Duncan, the senior linebacker for the Indians. Yeah, it looked like Coach Pritchard is kind of playing it safe there and putting it in the hands of his running back and trying to get it behind Richard Bledsoe, the 12th grader, the 6'2", 310-pounder. So second down and goal coming up this time at the three as he picked up three on that carry. Ohatchee, the defense with their backs against the wall right now against this Tiger team. Lane. In the backfield this time along with Jay Wright. And give it once again. No, fake it and walk it in the end zone. Easy pickings for Brody Worthington. And Wortham with a nice fake that time. Ohatchee bid and Wortham runs the bootleg and walks it in the end zone. Tigers lead it now 13 to 6. That was a good little fake. It had me fooled. Yeah. Good job by our cameraman of finding the football there as Wortham really pulled off a nice fake. On to attempt the extra point once again for the Tigers as Buck Hurd. He made the first. Holding the ball will be number 12. That is Brody, Brody Wortham. Wortham's got it. Hold is down. That kick is up. And that kick looks good. Nope, it is no good. So now both teams for the missed extra point. The lead stays at seven. But the Tigers back-to-back -back scores. They lead it here on the Creek Bank on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Big Daddy's Barbecue on Highway 21 is where Munford comes to eat. You'll always find delicious home cooking daily with fast, friendly service. Big Daddy's offers plates or sandwiches with all your favorite sides to choose from, specializing in wings, burgers, chicken, ribs, and barbecue. Open early, open late, six days a week. Come in with family or friends or call ahead and take it home. 256-358-9005. Big Daddy's Barbecue, proud supporters of the Munford Lions. Play or the last scoring play by Randolph County. It was a nice fake and bootleg by Worthington. 
Yeah, it looks like the quarterback, he goes under center here and hands it off to Wortham. And he just scoots around the outside and fools everybody, including me, and goes yeah. in the end zone untouched. Wortham with a nice pick and a touchdown of the Tigers after the missed extra point lead at 13 to six. Mumford up early on, Dable 14 to nothing in the opening quarter in that one. One of the early scores that we have reporting in. Welburn leads Pleasant Valley seven to nothing. Jacksonville over Sacks. How about this one? Ten to nothing. The Golden Eagles lead that one early. What? And Piedmont up on Glencoe seven to nothing early in that ball game. Here is Prestridge with a high end over end kick. Combs who fumbled the last one. He's got it, bringing it back again. He's back out across the 15. He dances across the 20 and gets it up across the 25 and out near the 28-yard line. Taken down by Ontario Hester and hangs on to the ball that time. Ohatchee will have it down by seven. Yeah, it looks like he was really hanging on, hanging on to that ball this time. Coach might have given him an ear, earful off that last one, but not much you can do when that helmet comes in there and hits that football. Uh, that was just a good hit that time. We have a penalty. Did I see a penalty call there? I thought I, I thought I thought a flag. Oh, yeah, we did. I think that's going to be marched off against the Indians for the proverbial block in the back. So that's going to back them up deep in their own territory. So they'll have a long penalty way to go. Penalty is going to be assessed against the Indians for holding. Yeah, fumbles, so have holding on the red the during the return. It's a first down for red. Now to the eight. All right, so there you go. Jimmy Buckaloo letting us know. Holding call against O'Hatchie. So it'll be first and 10 now for the Indians back on their own 18-yard line. So. We'll see if they can put together another long time consuming drive that they opened the game with. First and 10, Allward. Thomas in the backfield alongside. Red Eagle offense. Thomas has got it, bounces it to the outside, then cuts it back up the middle, stays on his feet, and plows forward. Has nice yardage on that first down play around the ankles. Trey Terrell hanging on until the Calvary could arrive. Second down coming up for the Indians after a gain of about five. Yeah, Thomas is hitting that hole and it's blocked up, but he just keeps on turning them legs and uh, he's picking up some positive yardage. Very fast first quarter so far. 3.32 to go now in the opening quarter. Ohatchee trailing now for the first time in this one after taking the early lead. Allward operating out of the backfield, loses the ball, and it's picked up by Thomas. And he's got a first down and more as Dominic Thomas takes it and scoots around right in for the first down. Was that a fumble, Ruski? I'd like to see a replay on that one if we have it to see if that was a really a mishandled snap or just a little razzle-dazzle by the Indians. Looked like he mishandled it, but I don't know. But that was a heads-up play by Thomas to pick it up and scoot around the right side and get to pick up the first down. So first and 10 for the Indians now out across the 30 at the 34-yard line. As the running game has really been going tonight for Ohatchee. Albert's got it. Going to hand it this time to Sellers. Lowers the head out to about the 40. That's going to be it. That'll be a gain of about three yards or so, and that's going to be about it. The line doing a good job that time for Ohatchee. Lowering the head and stopping that one up. That is Stephen Atkins, and he is a junior for the Tigers. Sadler's going to leave the ball game because he lost his helmet. Alabama State rule. Good rule. Good rule. All right, so second down now, and we're going to call it nine yards to go as he gets it only out to the 35, so second and nine for the Indians. I'm really impressed with this Thomas. Boy, he is something else. And now we've got a whistle, and we are going to have a clock, clock issue, I believe. Trying to get the clock reset now, running a little time off of it. And now we're ready to go with 2.45 to go in the opening quarter. Second and nine for the Indians at their own 35. Here's Thomas running right, looking for a hole across that right side, and uh, finding the going tough over there. Good, stout defensive play on the far side that time by the Randolph County Tigers. He was trying to find the outside, but it just kind of collapsed on him right there, but he was able to pick up about three yards. We've lost the, we have lost the scoreboard. And now the officials will have to stop the game because we lost power altogether on the scoreboard. So we will have to take a uh, stoppage in play while they try to fix the scoreboard and get it back to where it belongs. So that may take a moment. We'll grab a timeout. Good one here on the Creek Bank tonight. Randolph County on top early here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Pop Carry, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. 
Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPC.com. Hi, everybody. Eli Gold here, and we are celebrating at Town & Country Ford. The numbers are in, and Ford is again America's best-selling brand and the number one selling vehicle for 40 years, the Ford F-150, and we've got a ton of them from which you can choose. The highest owner loyalty of any brand is what makes Ford happen, and Town & Country Ford's people are what make the dealership happen. People and selection, you can't beat it. Town & Country Ford, Bessemer and Pell City. Well, there you see the problem right now. The action on the field has been wide open and electric, but electric seems to be the problem with the scoreboard is we don't have one right now. <laughs> and that has forced a stoppage in play there. The people milling around the field, Brandon. Grady Sam Brandon still with you. And uh, that's been kind of tough tonight with the scoreboard not working, and it's kind of halted what has been a very good first quarter of football action here on the Creek Bank. It is. Randolph County's leading 13-6. to six. They kind of exchange blows. Ohatchee put together a long drive, and then uh, Ohatchee kicks it off, and Randolph County runs it straight up the pot, puts it in the end zone, and here we are, and then they'll fumble, and we've had a little bit of everything. We have had a little bit of everything. What we have seen is Ohatchee's offense, that Red Eagle offense, be very effective once again tonight, running and mixing in the pass and doing a good job with that as it has been effective for the Indians' offense. But Randolph County now, on this drive, they've kind of shut that down a little bit, and I think Ohatchee's got to go back to the air, but that's something they've been able to do tonight. Yeah, uh, he's been connecting really good with the uh, sellers, and... Uh, that's been his workhorse, you know, number t number seven, Thomas. So we'll just have to, hey, we got our clock back. And there we go, we got the scoreboard back. So now uh, we're looking at third and long, so maybe yeah. we could see that, that credible pass, see if uh, we think they can connect back up, see if uh, Allward and Sellers can connect again. Brian Wright and Allward, or rather Brian Wright and Jesse Sellers split out wide left this time for Grayson Allward. And Allward's going to roll that way, so he'll be throwing across his body a little bit. Steps up, drills it over the middle, intercepted. Randolph County with their second turnover of the night, and they're going to cash it in for six. That's going to be Aaron Knight. He's going to take it to the house, and the Tigers have opened it up now to 19-6 to six lead. Late in this first quarter, two turnovers by the Indians, and both of them have been devastating for Ohatchee. Yeah, it looks like Allward right here was trying to find Sellers, and he throws a pass up, and boom, Knight jumps up and catches it, and there wasn't nothing but open turf in front of him, and jukes and jives, and strolls right into the end zone. And just like that, Randolph County with two big plays, forcing turnovers, one on special teams, one on the defense now, and the Tigers are suddenly in control of this one, 19-6. Pending the uh, extra point coming up here for Randolph County. And now they're going to pull back, and it looks like we are going to have a timeout on the field. I think we'll see a two-point play coming up for Randolph County. They lead it 19-6 to here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Randolph County out of the timeout. I think the Tigers may be looking at a two-point play here to try to make this lead go up to 15 here as they miss the extra point and only have it at a 14 will only have it at a a 13 point lead if they're able to cash it in so if they can go for two they make it 21 to six and that would make it a 15 point advantage for the tigers that's good call. here's the call that's going to be lane skipping it in the end zone nobody touched him making it look easy are the tigers they extend that lead to 15 now 21 to 15 over the home standing indians we'll grab a timeout it is the friday night network high school game of the week what's behind the ca a world full of opportunities where are you now where are you going 
Where do you want to be? These are all important in determining your path in life. More importantly, why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? At Central Alabama Community College, you can be anything you wish to be. Don't put your future on hold and don't settle for less than excellence. We are Central Alabama Community College. Central to you. Central to your success. Randolph County has cashed in two big turnovers by Ohanchi here in the latter half of this first quarter, and they have put three touchdowns on the board, Brandon, just like that. And what we thought was a game that looked like it was going to be dominated by Ohanchi on the first drive has turned into almost a bit of a rout here in the late first quarter going by Randolph County, just cashing in the mistakes by Ohanchi. I guess looks can be deceiving because uh, <laughs> Ohanchi's had some nice drives and connecting on passes and good solid runs, but penalties, Fumbles and interceptions will cost you a ball game. Indeed, they will. And right now they're down by 15 here at home, but still a lot of time left. We're still in the first quarter, so the first quarter. Yeah, still a minute 58 to go in this opening quarter, so still plenty of time. Prestridge kick it deep to Combs another time. Combs is going to take it at about his eight-yard line, and he'll bring it back out now. Right up the gut again, got a hole. Combs breaking tackles, finally spun down out of the 39-yard line by the kicker, Andrew Prestridge, but good field position to start the drive for the Indians. It was a very good run by Combs. Uh, he just, it was just open turf, but that hole kind of collapsed up here close to midfield. So it'll be first and 10 for the Indians, and they'll see if they can kind of get their feet back under them, Brandon. They kind of got to shake off those turnovers and see if they can put something together here. Well, Hatchie's got to get back to what they do, and that's run their offense like they did on that first drive. Uh, they got to stop the penalties and fumbles and just put their head back in the ball game. Here's Alward. going to try to do just that with Sellers. He is a dependable running back, comes out from that wing back position, but doesn't get much. Maybe a yard to the 40, and that's going to be it. He's taken down right there by Carter Barnes, a ninth grader for Randolph County. Yeah, Randolph County's starting to dominate that line of scrimmage, and uh, Sellers could not hit the outside like he was wanting to do. Of course, you know, I think Thomas has had a little bit better success in running the ball, so we'll see if they put it back in his hands. I see him on the field. So. Second and long now for the Indians. Not a position they like to be in with this offense. Allward had the pick on his last pass attempt. He's not going to take one here. He's going to hand it off to Thomas, and that's a good call. Thomas barrels his way across midfield and powers his way down to the 45-yard line for the Indians. And now they've got that offense cranked back up once again, making the stop that time. T.J. Sims, the junior for the Tigers. Thomas just has their number tonight. He's uh, running with some authority right now. So, Yeah, we have him listed as one of the up-and-coming backs for this team. And boy, he has really showed his medal tonight so far in this one against the Tiger defense. He is impressive. He'll set up to the right side of Allward this time. Drops the ball. It's on the ground. Randolph County, they've got it again. Got it again. Tigers with their third forced turnover here in the first quarter. And I don't know if you can really call that one forced. That's just a low snap from center. And a turnover. Here it is again, Brandon. Yeah, the quarterback takes it from shotgun and puts it on the turf. And Thomas turns around, looks, and Randolph County jumps on the ball. And now they've got it first and 10. So... Trying to get the number there on the Randolph County Tiger who made the recovery, but it is another big turnover for Ohatchee and ends another drive that looked like it had promise. And that's the third turnover in the first quarter, and that's going to get you beat most games you play. It is against Randolph County because uh, not only are they getting the ball back, but uh, they're putting it in zone as well. Wortham will operate out under center. Almost draws the defense off. Fake it to Lane. Now he's got pressure. He's hit, and he does a good job of hanging on to the football as he is sacked back near the 40-yard line coming through there was Larry Enos. All right, makes it Larry Noah. He is a junior linebacker. Blitzed that time and got right in on Wortham before he had time to set up. Noah just came in there untouched and uh, got in there on the quarterback. And lucky that wasn't a fumble, but he was able to. Actually, he did fumble it right there, but the ground caused it. So he stopped all the way back at the 41-yard line, a loss of nine. That might be the last play of the first quarter. Though here come the Tigers back to the line of scrimmage. They'll operate up out of that wishbone look on offense once again. Here is Wortham. Under center. This time he's going to hand it off. And that's Lane. He's got running room. Gets that nine yards back and then some as he is down into Indian territory down around the 47-yard line before he is corralled. And that's how the first quarter will end. Randolph County leads it 21-6 to here tonight over the homestanding Ohanchi Indians. This is the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. 
Talladega County Exchange has four locations to serve hunters and farmers. Talladega, Midstate Co-op in Columbiana, and St. Clair Farmers Co-op in Pell City and Asheville. We have a huge selection of hunting supplies, as well as feed, seed, fertilizer, and chemicals. Our Pell City store is a certified Hoyt dealer and archery center, while Columbiana has a full-line small engine repair shop. So come by our quality co-op stores today and check out our down-to-earth values. You'll be glad you did. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer with our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums. Our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. We welcome you back here to the Creek Bank. The Indians just committed their third turnover of the first quarter a moment ago. Randolph County now with it. Third down and six from the Ohatchee 46-yard line. Remember, Randolph County lost nine yards on the first down play. Gave it off to Trent Lane on second down, and he got all of that back, plus four more. And now the Tigers will have it down at the Indian 46. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele. And, you know, it has just really been a game where Ohatchee's killing themselves. It is, putting the ball on the turf and uh, a couple of penalties and an interception. And I'll say that's been two fumbles, actually, one on the kickoff and one on a play while it goes. So uh, can't have that against a good football team. Now they have moved the ball down to the 44 of the Indians, so make it third and four for Randolph County. And they will spread it out this time. And we've got some discussion again about where the ball is supposed to go. Scoreboard had it. It was supposed to be on the 46, the officials. Now are discussing that. Now, are they going to move the ball back two yards? No. They're going to leave it at the 44. They still look it over notes. And Jimmy Buckaloo says, we're ready to play. Third and four, Tigers. Wortham has got Knight in the backfield alongside. And he's going to take it and run in an option play. Got it to Wortham. Cuts it up. Got his first down and more as he's down inside the 40, down near the 36-yard line. Up to make the stop that time is Kevin Williamson, and it's first and 10, Randolph County. That was just a nice run by Knight. I haven't seen the option since the Georgia Tech game the other night, so it was nice to see that work and pick up some positive yardage. You can see some option in this ball game. No doubt about that. Wortham gets a play in from across the way. And the Tigers... Looking to take complete control of this football game if they can cash yet yes, another turnover into points. Wortham has the wishbone set behind him. Going to give it to Knight. Knight right up the middle. Lowers ahead. He's in near the 30-yard line. Call it the 31. So that is going to be Combs on the stop that time for Ohatchee, and that's a quick gain of five for the Tigers. And they're really running the ball, not just running it straight up the pike in a nice little hole and picks up five yards. So Randolph County kind of, at this point, doing whatever they want offensively to this Ohatchee defense. And remember, we had six starters back, did the Indians on defense. It's offense where they only had three returning. Randolph County, though, with just about everybody back, and it looks like they're a much improved team over last year. Fumble, though, ball on the ground, but falling on it quickly is Lane. That time the exchange didn't look good on that one. No, that kind of looked like a busted play right there, but uh, unlike Ohatchee, Randolph County was able to jump on their fumble real quick and get the recovery. So it's going to be third and five. They got back to the line of scrimmage. Third and five from the Indian 31-yard line. And you kind of wonder if this isn't probably two down territory right here for Randolph County, this deep into Indian territory. I would say so. It looks like we've got some confusion across the way. The play clock now down to 10. So the Tigers are going to have to hurry to get this one off. Might see them burn a timeout here as they still look confused. With 5-4 to go on the play clock. Worth them. Sets up two seconds for him. Got the snap off. Now worth him rolling light pressure coming from the backside. Rifles it down. Got his man. Bounces off a tackle, and he's got a first down. That was completed that time to Trey Terrell. Finally getting it on the ground was number 45, Austin Duncan. Yeah, Trey Terrell was able to break loose here. He's a 12th grader. We'll take a look at the replay here. Wortham's under shotgun. Clock was running down on him, but he was able to get the high snap and roll out to his right uh, and pass right up there to Terrell, and uh, he was able to take the pick up the first down and 
Yeah, Randall County's some, in business. They had a little, little mustard on that one. He did. He ripped, oh. rifled that one in there nicely. Worth them this time. Randolph County goes back under center with a lot wishbone look, and there goes Knight off a right tackle. Somersaults as he goes in, no, in over in down, but he's got a good gain across the way, and it'll be second down coming up for the Tigers. And he gets about five yards or so, second to five coming up. Has Randolph County had a busted play yet other than looks like everything they put in the on the field's working tonight. Uh, they're down to the Indian six-yard line. They can get a first down, down at the one. Here come the Tigers trying to convert another turnover into points. They've been very efficient at that tonight. Here is Wortham under center once again for the Tigers. He's going to turn. He's going to hand it. That's Knight going right up the middle, breaks a tackle, stay, stretches out, touchdown. Randolph County making it look easy after another Ohachi turnover, and the Tigers all over the Indians here on the Creek Bank, 27 to 6. Unbelievable. I was not expecting this, Grady. We'll take a look at the replay here. Or at the end of it. Right, that's the end of the play there after Knight had taken the handoff and uh, ran it into the end zone. So it will be extra point attempt time once again for Buck Hurd. Wortham will hold it. Snap is good. The kick is up, and that kick is good. And it is all Randolph County here on the Creek Bank tonight. Turnovers killing the Indians. The Tigers are making a pay here on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. When you're the boss, you need the right machines. The right machine is a new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR side-by-side. -side. Quality fit and finish and all this cabin space. Maneuvers like you wouldn't believe. The new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR, the strongest, because I said so. See the full line today at Talladega Cycle Sales on Highway 21 in Talladega or online at talladegacyclesales.com. The homestanding Indians now find themselves in a deep hole here at Roy C. Owens Field, better known as the Creek Bank here in Ohatchee. Grady Saff alongside Brandon Steele, and it has been a night of turnovers for the Indians, and that has been the story of this football game. It has, uh, Grady. Uh, the Apache's putting the ball on the field, and uh, Randolph County has taken every advantage of every turnover. They have 21 points off of turnovers tonight for the Tigers. Uh, a pick six on defense, and then two fumbles resulting in touchdowns. Throw in the long kick return by set them up first and goal inside the one for the first score of the night. And Randolph County has gotten it done. And right now, Ohachi has just got to find a way to get something positive going here and not turn the football over. Short field. Prestridge will move on the football. This time he'll hit the Lopes and Combs. Has trouble handling it. Now still have a trouble handling it. Just, that's the only thing he could do. Just had to fall on the football. Start deep in their own territory this time after the mishandles. Looks like the line drive kick kind of worked because he did take him a couple of seconds and no luck and he just had to fall on it and that's not a good field position. You know. Be back at their own 14 yard line so first down and 10. The Indians and they desperately need something going on offense. A pretty good time consuming drive for six would be good right now for this Indian team. The ball. They can, they have. Here's Alward giving it to Thomas. Got a little rough, breaks it out across the 15-yard line, out to about the 17 before he right. And it'll be second down and about seven coming up for the end. Running really hard. He got to the outside, almost got to the outside right there and picked up about play. So second down and second, Indian 17-yard line. And the Indians still staying at their offensive pace. They, they do what they do, per se. Here's Alward. He's going to do a little quick bootleg. company out there gets away. He loves a little jump pass. And that accepted once again by the Tigers. Lay it out and dive before it was jump up with it. It'll be third and long coming up for the Indians. Alward's in half in there and rode out with the bootleg. And it's almost another... They do not need that right now. They want to stay in this ball game. Well, they need a three out, and that's what they're facing if they can't pick a first down up here. Seven, which is not a good number for this offense. No, no, not. Uh, they're, uh, they like to eat up some clock, and if uh, Randolph's come into doing something they're not comfortable doing. 
fourth down and long coming up. Four possession down. Here is all the play call now. Operates out of that shotgun. And he's going to draw. Makes a man miss. And he's going to roll forward out near the yard line. Let's see where they spot him. That's going to be close. But they're already yards up across the way. I think he's going to be about a yard short of his first down. Looks like he's about a, about a yard short, Grady. But uh, Sellers was out there on that. He was open there for a split second. But uh, I think that was the quarterback draw all Jackson will now up 17 to South Cats. Elmore County still leading leads 7 to 3 as we're also Gadsden City Trails. Hewitt Trustful 14 to 3 now. Rand 14 to nothing. Silicaga up big 21 to 7 on Lincoln. Oxford shutting out 14 to nothing early on in that ball game. They'll stretch the check for the measurement and he is going to be. About a foot short, so closer to the first down than we realized, but a still a foot, and I, I don't know that you can go for that this deep in your own territory. I don't know when uh, Coach Martin, I wouldn't be surprised to watch him punt this out of the group here. Mudford leads Dadeville 14 to Nademont 21, zip over Glencoe. Central Clay County leads to nothing in the opening quarter. Alexandria up on Arab, 8-0. And well, 14 to nothing in the second quarter of that one. Such good picks. And somebody yeah. like Jackson <laughs> Yeah. Up. Yeah. Oh, it is fourth and short, and the Indians are lining up to go for it deep in their 24 yard line. Right, they may just try the offsides here. We'll see if they'll actually run a play or not. Here is Allward. Going to give it to Thomas. Cuts it up. Got his first down on a whole lot more. Out to the 40 yard line. First and 10 for the Indians. Trey Terrell make And uh, that was a gutsy call by Coach Scott Martin. just going to sit on the play and make them jump off side. Kind of looked like they were going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> got reset and they actually went ahead and snapped the ball. So. That play worked well. First and 10 now for O'Hatch on 40 yard line. Here's Allward. Going to hand it off to Thomas. Thomas Ed gets it out for a couple, out to about the 42 yard line. And Aaron Knight on the stop along with EJ Clark. The eight coming up for the Indians. I don't think Randolph County back to that other play. I think thought they were just going to sit on the play and then they snapped it and they coming up there for the first down. So they kind of worked ready for it. Right. Second and long once again now for Ohatchee. Ball is on 42-yard lines. Handed on the end around. That seller's looking for blocking. Makes a couple around, but can't get away from the third man. He's going to drop him across. And that's going to be Trey Terrell on the stop. Yes, Sellers under there. He just kept running to the running side to side there. And uh, so now we're looking at third and long. Third and long once again for Ohatchee. And maybe back to the 41 yard line, call it. So third and nine for the clock continues to roll here. We're about second quarter. Here's Allward. And it's Thomas running it around the right side. He is going to be four. Tries to spin forward. Going to be just short of the 40. It is a host of Tigers. We're in there to make that stop. Aaron Hoff also went on. It was the Darius Callaway. And uh, also in there, seven TJ Sims. And it is going to be the mount comes with 547 to go here in the second. And it is all Randolph County here on the Friday Night Network of the week. What's behind the CA? A world full of opportunity. Now, where are you going? Where do you want to be? These are all in your path in life. More importantly, why be ordinary? Extraordinary. At Central Alabama Community College to be. Don't put your future on hold and don't settle for less. We are Central Alabama Community College. Central to you. Hey, time out, even though that's at this point anymore. It's a nice night out here, Brandon. It's gorgeous out here tonight. I think we're in the right now and no way. 
handed no on that last week. Yeah, showing it right now. Temperature is 72 degrees, and as you said, not a of wind moving out here, so it's a very nice night. No humidity it's for better football weather than this. No, not at all. Of course, that, that wind's going to change here too. Uh, yeah, when Irma arrives. So it'll be first down. Actually, make it fourth down at five now for Ohanchi, and they look like they're going for it again on 45, and that tells you that they feel like it's time to make some things happen. Oh, we're going to have pressure. Sacked. Big knife in through there and making the hit and the stop. Randolph County Tigers, that's E.J. Clark who gets in there and gets it done and takes all the way back inside the 35-yard line at the 32. Nothing for E.J. Clark. He just busted through that line, and that was really patchy. They really need to make something happen there. I'm not so sure if I would have just planted there and regrouped. You don't want to give Randolph County a short field the way they're out now. So it'll be the Tigers once again with a very ill. They'll mark it now, let's say, at the 33-yard like so. First down and 10 for the Tigers from there. Already up 28 to 6, you see. And they've got a chance to add to that well, power eye set this time behind Wortham. Going to toss, running right, hit, bounces, and we've got a flag coming in from the back. As Allward with a short gain down inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28. That's about a four yard gain. On the tackle was Gacy. What the fall is going to be holding. So it's holding. Preliminary. Well, well, Randolph County is going to find themselves backed up. Not too many penalties tonight. No, it's been a pretty clean, cleanly played game as far as it has been a turnover fest here for uh, this one is now. Down. On what? It's a five yard, 10 yard penalty. From the spot of the foul, remains first down. So that'll be a second down. We'll make it first down at 21 from the four-yard line now of the Indians. Let's see if that will give us a chance to maybe get a stop here. Pressures will spread out wide this time. I said behind Wortham. A lot of formations out of this round offense. Wortham. Going to fake the little toss, fire down the middle, got a man wide open, drops it. Mm. Had E.J. Clark wide open, and he got made steps as Allward was closing fast. It was either the footsteps or so much mustard on that throw because he really in there, but uh, he was hitting him earlier in the in the game. So uh, now we're looking at second 21. So the Tigers. Second and out at the Ohatchee 44 yard line. The Indians just trying to get a stop right. Clock gets stopped on that incompletion by Randolph County with 5 or 5.14 make it to go here in the second quarter. This time it'll be Trey Terrell spinning out wide left. Again, an eye look for in. That's going to be worth them dropping back and incomplete down the sidelines. Tigers looking for an interference call. Not going to get Woodridge down there that time by Larry Noah on Andrew Preston. Came up a little bit a little gimpy after that, but looks like he'll be okay. He had a little fade there and tried to throw it up there and see if his receiver could run up under it, but uh, came up short. So it is. Third down now, and long, Randolph County Tigers comfortably ahead in this one. They'd like to add after a good defensive stand. Turned it over on downs. This time we'll double over to the left side with Ladarius Callaway and also should split out there. But going the other way and open is E.J. Smith, or make it E.J. Clark, and he makes a good catch. and going to be knocked down short of his first down yard. It took a big hit there. But he that did. was a nice throw down at Wortham. I was wondering which one of them bullets was going to hit, but uh, it, he hit either right there. Almost picked up the first down. And we're going to have a timeout. And so it's going to be about three, maybe four yards short of the first down to the field. Randolph County wants to come up with a play. Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week.
Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your author dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti for your team, a business, or a special event. Color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hand, you'll find a full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand to find items. Nationally recognized, but right here in for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Griffin laser engraving. And up can it going for it on a fourth and three. From inside the 25-yard line of the inch. Little misdirection. There goes Knight. He's got to walk into the end zone. Touched. Great play making that time by the Tiger. It didn't look easy, and they are big time all over Ohatchee now, 30 to 6. It didn't even look like Ohatchee knew the ball was snapped. Everybody was still down there, steps walking in the end zone. So maybe we can see that on instant replay there because that was, uh, it didn't look like anybody on Ohatchee moved. So it'll be Buck Hurd on to attempt the extra point for the Randolph Tigers. Legs been getting a workout tonight as they'll try to make it five to six lead. And I don't think anybody saw this one coming. Not Randolph County with the kick. That extra point is good. And it is Tigers. It has been since the opening drive that Ohatchee took in. Now, Tigers dominating here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. That a fender bender? Have them tow it or take it yourself to Wesley's Paint and Body. His guys have been this area's go-to team for quality automotive body work for years. All makes and models, foreign or domestic, they take, make them look like new. And with Wesley's larger new facility, including two, they can get you fixed up fast. Always free estimates, best price, insurance claims welcomed, and service with a smile. That's Wesley's Paint and Body 8 East in Anniston. All ran down here on the Creek Bank tonight. The Tigers avenging the playoff loss to Ohatchee in a play tonight in the region opener for both teams here from Roy C. Owen on the Creek Bank. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele. Was in this first half for Ohatchee. That certainly has certainly to their woes, but a real dominant Randolph County team that is going to turn turnovers into points, plus a stout defensive performance, and the Tigers looking really Ever since that first drive, Ohatchee put on them, uh, they have turned it up, and she has no answers for what a Randolph these Tigers are doing to them. Going to be pressured to kick it off one more time for the Randolph Tigers, and deep this time. Combs is going to move to an up back and a shift. Larry Noah back into that deep back position for Ohatchee as Combs has had his problems back there tonight. And a high end over end kick is going to feel back inside on 10, and he's going to be knocked down right about the 19, 18, 19 yard line by Trey Terry. A good open field tackle that time for the Randolph County Tigers. I'm busting in there and uh. Like he just knocked him for a loop right there and didn't really pick up much yardage on that carry. So the end cut out for him if they're going to get back in this one, and I'm not sure they can with the four and a half to go in the second quarter, but Randolph County hasn't shown any signs of opt. <laughs> no, they sure haven't. Uh, but, you know, this is a good check for Ohio. Let's see what, you, what your team's made of right here, you know. I, I still think Ohio can get climb back into this. Well, we've seen stranger things. Oh. Yes, we have. Here is all we're going to hand it to Thomas. Lay has worked well tonight. Makes the man miss. Dives forward out to the five-yard line. So give him about six on first down. Call it second and up for the Indians. Thomas is running real good. I think he's running a little bit better than he is. Uh, like I said, it's second down and about five to go. Got to put it in the playmaker's hands now. Now mark him at the call. It's second down and four here for the Indians if they not in any big hurry. Still running their offense just at a normal. Try to get a touchdown here before halftime. You get the ball to start quarter. Auburn calls his own number this time. He's going to have a couple be about it as the defense right there stacks him up. Clark is off the bottom of the pile for Randolph County. 
Yeah, I don't know where to go on that play. Uh, the, the Randolph County, they closed up that hole. I don't know if that was a called quarterback draw or what. But running, I don't know if I'd be trying to run quarterback draws. He's running with some authority right now. His hands. So it'll be third down, and we'll call it pretty close to four yards to go out there right now for the Ohatchee Indians. Allward. Going to take it. Going to run it to the center backfield and dropped. And that's E.J. Clark coming through untouched. And actually, let's make that number 20, Braxton Daniel, who comes through there. Not right the first time. That's E.J. Clark. <laughs> 30. Yeah. Yeah. He's been all over tonight. But uh, Sellers, he was just kind of dropped right there. Now we're looking long. And Ohechi's in a. Got to go for it. Fourth, here. Yeah, I think they're going to kick it out of there with there Jesse Sellers, fourth and seven at the two. And Sellers is going to kick it. We had movement and not a good punt by Sellers. That would get across the 45 and out about the 46-yard line of the Indians. I'm Randolph County. I decline the penalty and take the ball right there. They're going to do. Because it was a poor kick and in motion at the same time. And they're going to bring this. They're going to call that a dead ball foul. what Jimmy's calling for, a dead ball foul, and a uh, kick. Back him up. That may be an advantage throw from Jimmy Buckaloo. Breaks the call. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Fourth down. So Sellers will stand back a little deeper in his own now. Going to be back inside his own five-yard line as he gets set punt. Randolph County figures to get very good field position. Prestridge is standing back at the Ohatchee 46. Sellers gets it out of there. Better kick. That is a high kick that Prestridge is going to let bounce. And he's going to take a sideways spin, and it's going to be downed out at about the 40-yard line. So Randolph County actually picks up a couple of yards on that exchange. Yeah, they field position with 2.13 to go here in the second quarter. So the Tigers could add yet another. Yeah, Randolph County is back in really good field position right here just across the feet. Let's see what they're going to do right here before halftime with 2.13 left. On. Mumford over Dadeville, 21 to 7. Central Clay County up 7 3. LA Piedmont all over Glencoe, 27 to zip. White Plains and Aniana, 14. Here is Wortham. And Link dropping back, looking to put it in the air. Got time down the middle of the field. Got a man. And Clark going to be knocked out of bounds down deep in Ohatchee territory. Here come the Tigers just outside the 10 yard line. Randolph County still offense and uh, <laughs> found the open receiver down there. Alexandria all over Arab tonight. to nothing. Anderson leads Asheville 20 to 6. Leads up on 90, 10 to 7 now. Sachs has gained the lead on Jacksonville 20 to 17. And got a timeout taken on the field. 2.04 to go here in the second quarter. Lead it big here on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. Hi, everybody. Eli Gold here, and we are celebrating at Town & Country Ford. The numbers are in, and Ford is again America's best-selling brand and the number one selling vehicle for 40 years, the Ford F-150, and we've got a ton of them from which you can choose. The highest owner loyalty of any brand is what makes Ford happen, and Town & Country Ford's people are what make the dealership happen. People and selection. You can't beat it. Town & Country Ford, Bessemer, and Pell City. A dominant, impressive performance tonight for the visiting team from down in Randolph County. The Tigers all over Ohatchee here on the Creek Bank tonight in a game that, with a score that I don't think any of us saw coming. I sure did. This is uh, Randolph County's for real. First and 10 down at the Ohatchee 14-yard line for the Tigers. Again, out of that wishbone attack, Wortham under center. And he's going to hand it, and that's Trent Lane. Bowling over defenders, and he's down inside the 10, down about the 7-yard line. Getting him on the ground that time is, Kel, is Kevin Williamson, and it'll be second and short coming up for the Tigers. Yeah, looks like uh, we're going to put it on the ground here. Trent Lane, 11th grader, very good runner. 
You know, we're just looking at second and about four yards to go. Got it down at the Ohatchee seven yard line. Clock continues to run. Randolph County got plenty of time. They're not in any hurry. Not with that lead. Here's a wishbone set behind Wortham. He's going to turn. He's going to hand it. Nope, fakes it. Looking to throw the ball. Now he's going to be pressured, and Wortham's going to roll this right. Fires it back across. Intercepted. Intercepted by the Indians. And that ball is coming out. And that was intercepted by Grayson Allward. Got it out to the 17-yard line. So the Indians come up with a big play on defense to stop a Randolph County drive. Yeah, Grayson Allward was able to get that, and uh, that was a... Uh, <laughs> just a big mistake by Randolph County. I don't know why they just didn't keep it on the ground going what's working for them, but now Ohatchee's in business, and that's the kind of thing that can get you back in a ball game. Yeah, maybe it's a spark the Indians need. That was a big pick by Allward. Decided to bring it out, got it out to the 17. Still 106 remaining here, so some time for this Indian offense. We'll see if they can get anything going, but as it is, they at least kept Randolph County from posting another score here before halftime. Allward's got Thomas in the backfield, going to hand it to him, and he's going to be hit immediately and driven to the turf. And let me get that number, and I think that's E.J. Clark once again. It is. Boy, has he been all over the field tonight. He has. Uh, Thomas just don't want to keep running with the same kind of authority. I wonder if he might be injured. Because we seen Sellers in there a while ago, and now you got Thomas back in there. I'm not so sure he might uh, have a little strain or something going on because he's not running the way he did in the first quarter. So it'll be second and long as that play lost a yard, second and 11 from the Indian 16. And I think, you, I think you're going to see Ohatchee just look to get out of here, go in at halftime and regroup and try to come out and get something going in the third quarter. Allward going to hand it to Thomas this time, coming around the near side, and he's going to be wrapped up quickly and dropped to the ground. Leading the charge there is C.J. Pinker, and he is number 68 for the Tigers. So that may well be the final play of the first half. Ohatchee looks to be in no hurry, and I think the Indians are just going to go in, lick their wounds, and see if they can come back out and mount some sort of a comeback here in the second half on the Creek Bank. It's been all Randolph County tonight. We'll grab a timeout. We're coming back with our halftime report on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. Neighborhood Grub Mart is your one-stop shop for everything you need when you're on the go. Grub Mart features the best prices on Coke and Pepsi products and is home to the 99-cent bag of ice every day. And Grub Mart is your exclusive home for the popcorn bucket. Purchase yours for only $5.99, then bring it in for free refills throughout the year. That's right, free popcorn for a full year. Your locally owned and operated Grub Mart, in business for over 74 years. Forsyth Builders are passionate about what they do. A full-service contracting firm, Forsyth handles a variety of jobs, including industrial, commercial, renovations, and new construction. Forsyth has become a leader in construction management and has constructed or made additions on a number of area businesses like Noble Bank and ABS Business Systems, additions to Aniston's Country Club and f and Bank. Remember to make Forsyth Building Company your first choice for quality construction. Daffron Auto Salvage in Pell City is where you'll find over 30 acres of automotive salvage, plus a warehouse full of quality parts for almost any need. Just call ahead and tell us what you're looking for. At Daffron Auto Salvage, you'll find it all. Engine parts, transmissions, rear ends, radiators, suspension, body parts, auto glass, even tires and wheels. You'll also get fast, friendly service. It's been that way since 1965. Don't pay too much for parts. Think used first. Daffron Auto Salvage, 793 Old Cold City Road in Pell City. Hello, I'm Johnny Warren with Aniston EMS, and we're proud to be a part of the excitement of high school football games by providing emergency on-site services 
for local high school games. Anniston EMS provides this area with skilled, innovative, and dependable emergency care. As the area's only public safety company, Anniston EMS features dedicated employees who provide patients the highest quality pre-hospital care available. When you see Anniston EMS, you're seeing the best care possible. Play hard and be safe from all of us at Anniston EMS. We welcome you back here to the Creek Bank where the Ohatchee Indians finding themselves on the short end of that 35 to 6 score to the Randolph County Tigers. I'm Grady Sapp now joined by the lead writer for easportstoday.com. That is Al Muskie who is with me now. First off, good evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Grady. How about yourself? I I'm doing well. We've been sitting here talking about this one a little bit off the air, and, and I don't think any of us saw a score this big in this ball game. Uh, I think you're right. I'm it's a whole lot different than when these two teams played twice last year, isn't it? Yes. Um, I don't. I think the the score is surprising to a lot of folks. I don't think the uh, who's leading and, and who's not leading. I don't think that's surprising a lot of folks. I think Randolph County's really, really good for a team that's only one student over the uh, 3A or into the 3A limit. They're really acquitting themselves well uh, tonight, and they did last year, too. Yeah, well, we knew they were a young team last year. We knew they brought a lot of experience back. They only lost a couple of guys off that team from last year. And throughout the offseason, this has been one of the teams that have really been mentioned as one of the favorites in this region. I, I really like what I've seen out of them tonight. Um, last week when they played, they had three defensive scores, and I know you, you take a note of what they've done defensively tonight. Uh, I think their offense is really crisp. Uh, I like their quarterback. It should, if it stays like this, as I suspect it's going to, it should be a really neat game next week when they play Piedmont. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward to, to, to that one because, you know, we said this in the pregame, if you're Randolph County, if you come in here and get a win, then you get to go back home. And if you can find a way to beat Piedmont, man, you're sitting pretty in this region. It, it's This region is so good. And... We've got a playoff atmosphere kind of game, and it's set up that way. Um, Randolph County and Ohatchee played each other in the playoffs last year. We expected because of the reputations that both teams have gained last year, it was going to be a similar kind of game. It, it, it's absolutely it's a top ten game in the state. And then you have another playoff game, a playoff like game next week when they play Piedmont, and it, it'll make it so much more dynamic when they go in after a win like this. I mean, you know, they 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 had to. Ohashi had a lot to prove, and in, in, in this game, but it's it's how really good are they? Um, when they were 2-0. Uh, How good was that 2-0? And, and Randolph County is the team that is trying to well, establish themselves in the one year that they have left in 3A because you got to figure they're going back down to 2A since they're right at the edge um, in, in the classification uh, this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, three, three turnovers for... Ohatchee in the first half. All three cashed in for points by Randolph County, including a pick six. So you, you take away the 21 points that you've given up off of turnovers. The game's a lot closer, but I'm not sure that you would have stopped, that Randolph County wouldn't have scored some on some drives anyway. They uh, just played really right. good. They, they had, what was it, 21-6 at the end of the first quarter with 28 yards of offense. And uh, they got a pretty good defensive coordinator down there, a guy by the name of Steve Giddens, who's uh, who's done this a time or two. Uh, I, that, that is a that was a really huge addition to that staff when he kind of came off of retirement and hey, let me try and do something again, you know, try to do some more, and and really goes back to uh, to where it all began, I think, for him. Yeah, right back to his roots there at Randolph County. Uh, Al, some other games that maybe that had your attention tonight. Who were some of the other games that you were kind of really interested in around? The well, state? Lo locally. <coughs> It was the um, Saxon-Jacksonville game, uh, you know, because it's two county teams who were playing each other. And if I saw this right, Sax is now leading after uh, after being behind, I think, maybe two touchdowns early in the game. You know, and that's always a neat game because it's the former coach against his former team yeah. with uh, with Clint Smith, you know, playing Sax. Uh, that game interests me, and, and it's close. The, uh, a lot of the other games, I thought – while interesting would have been as one-sided as they have become, I, I think Welburn's uh, uh, like two touchdowns up on Pleasant Valley. Uh, uh, Piedmont's up on, on Glencoe. Oxford is up big on Brewer. 
Uh, and uh, um, I'm sorry, Alexandria is up big on on a rap And they were about the other games that I was interested in locally, you know, for us in Calhoun County. Yeah, we're still seeing Piedmont, I think, 27 to zip up on that game. Uh, the scores I'm seeing. Of course, this is not necessarily updated. Welburn was up 21-0. Alexandria 24-0 at last count. Aniston up by a couple of scores, 20-6 on Asheville. Leads with a little bit of a tussle down in Elmore County tonight, 10-7. To a little surprised by that after watching Leeds last week. They look really good at home against Cleburne County. Silicaga Lincoln, that's a pretty good ball game going on. That, that's up another big. one of those games where it's a... Uh, a coach going back to coach against his former team. You know, we had three of those games in the in in our area, at least three of those games in our area this this week. Jacksonville Sacks, mm -hmm. Lincoln Silicaga, and Donahoe Victory Christian. Where one of the coaches in that game was coaching against the place that they had coached at last year. Well I'll tell you somebody that doesn't have their act together score stream because their their scores have been all over the map tonight. And they, they it's kinda like you pull it up and then it drops out and loses all the scores, so it goes back to zero to zero. So it's chaos on score stream. I can tell you another early score that yep. I've heard and and uh, Mumford was leading seven nothing early. Oh, uh, they're up either 21 to 7 or 28 to 7 now i think it's 28 to 7 that they're up big on dayville and i felt like that was a big game for Munford. they really needed to after the tough loss at central clay county get into region play that's another tough region when we talk about regions around the state this one in 3a that one in 4a are probably maybe two of the best regions in the entire state well i, I think you're right obviously i see a lot of the 3a ball yeah. a, a lot more because we're more connected with the calhoun county folks uh, every week in that 3A Region 5, there is a game of importance. Sometimes there's two. But you, you cannot find, you know, you can go every week and find a big game in that, in that, uh, in that region. Whether it's somebody trying to play for a playoff spot, somebody trying to play for first place. There's always, there's always intrigue is, yeah. is the best way to put that. No question about that, Al. Always great stuff. Uh, everybody can check out easportstoday.com for all the latest in uh, high school and sports coverage for you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. We'll be up into the wee hours of the morning tonight trying to get it all together. Hit them straight this weekend. I did this morning. Good. 27 holes. All work. right. Thank you. I hear you. <laughs> That's Al Muskie, lead writer for easportstoday.com. Uh, kind enough to stop by. Right now we've got the Ohatchee Indian Marching Band just about to take the field. Why don't we settle in and enjoy their halftime performance here on the Friday Night Network, the Ohatchee Indian Marching Band. Get drums and guitars and keyboards and various things plugged in out here. So it looks like we're going to have guitars. We're going to have a, a pretty good halftime show coming up here from Ohatchee, I think, once they get all the electrical power ran out here at the midfield stripe. And they're still working on that. Is Ohatchee, they're the football team, having a tough time of it tonight. The band hoping to entertain the home folks here with a nice halftime performance. And it looks like we are just about ready to go as the band being announced now. And we will give a look and a listen to the Ohatchee Marching Indian Band. On behalf of Superintendent John Dyer and Principal Bobby Chittle, we proudly present the Ohatchee High School Marching Indian.
superior performance for the home folks on the Creek Bank tonight. Great halftime performance there by the Indians. I'm Grady Sapp, Brandon Steele, my partner. We'll be coming back and uh, taking a look at the halftime uh, stats and taking a look at the third right. quarter. Let me run to some scores down for you from some other games that are going on around our area. Victor Christian leads it over Donahoe 12-7 in that one. It is Central Clay County. That was a halftime score, 7-3 over Valley. That's a tight ball game. It is right now Munford all over Dayton, 36-7 in that one in the second quarter. It is Piedmont dominating Glencoe 33 to nothing. White Plains and Aniana. That's a good one. 14 to 14. That one tied in the second quarter. Aniston leads Asheville 20 to 6. In that one, Childersburg up on Hopeful 12 to 0. Welburn over Pleasant Valley by a score of 21 to zip. Sachs leads Jacksonville at the half 20 to 17. Recent uh, transfer from White Plains for the Golden Eagles. Macy Carr 152 yards rushing a couple of touchdowns on eight carries. Also, White Plains now has taken the lead over Aniana. I got a halftime update there from Mr. Muskie, 20 to 14. White Plains leading Aniana at the half. Alexandria's up big on Arab. Uh, they were leading that one 24 to nothing. And you've got uh, Keenan Woodruff with 176 yards, a couple of touchdowns on 13 carries for the uh, Alexandria Valley Cubs. We'll have some stats when we come back to the first half here on the Creek Bank, all Randolph County. We'll grab a timeout. We'll come back and get you set for the third quarter here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Custom Pizza on Highway 77 is where the Talladega area comes for one-of-a-kind homemade pizza. Made fresh to order, including the dough. Get yours with the toppings you want or choose from one of our many specialty pizzas. And just because it's fresh and homemade doesn't mean it has to cost more. Daily specials include a one-topping pizza you can pick up for just $8.75. Dine in, curbside, carry-out, or delivery. For the best pizza in Talladega, it's Custom Pizza. They also have calzones, hoagies, muffalettas, pasta, wings, even desserts. Call 256-362-3339 and place your order now. Your pet is an important part of your family that returns love and care unconditionally. And right now is the best time to think about your pet's care for the spring months ahead. Greenbrier Animal Clinic in Anniston has been taking care of pets in the Calton County area for over three decades. Call now and schedule your pet for their annual vaccinations, flea and tick treatment, or grooming. Dr. Bill Brom and Dr. Elizabeth Main ensure your pet always sees a vet. X-ray lab and the latest surgical facilities on site ensures quality health care. Greenbrier Animal Clinic. Warm hearts, treat cold noses. Talladega County Exchange has four locations to serve hunters and farmers. Talladega, Mid-State Co-op in Columbiana, and St. Clair Farmers Co-op in Pell City and Asheville. We have a huge selection of hunting supplies as well as feed, seed, fertilizer, and chemicals. Our Pell City store is a certified Hoyt dealer and archery center, while Columbiana has a full line small engine repair shop. So come by our quality co-op stores today and check out our down-to-earth values. You'll be glad you did. Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Apothecary, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPC.com. Welcome you back here to the Creek Bank where the Ohechi Indians being dominated tonight by the Randolph County Tigers. Let's, we didn't have time to do our offensive and defensive starters to start the game. They are brought to you by Grub Mart with the $5.99 popcorn bucket. Free refills for a year for only $5.99, Brandon. You like that, don't you? I love it. That's what I was out there looking for while we go trying to find my $5 bucket. Yeah, the $5 bucket at the Grub Mart, $5.99 with free refills for a year. You see the starting offensive lineup there for the Ohatchee Indians. Let's take a look now at the defensive starters 
for the Indians. That's where they had six players back on defense. And, uh, you know, it's been a nice night for some of those guys. Grayson Alvin with a pick for the Indians late in that second quarter that prevented a score by the Randolph County Tigers. Taking a look now at the offensive starters for the Randolph County Tigers. Well, they have been efficient tonight. It's been a nice performance by Brody Wortham at quarterback. Also, you, you had a really good night by Aaron Knight and also Trent Lane, who's not listed as a starter, but he's had a big night offensively. Yeah, Trent Lane's been running with some authority, you know, just like uh, O'Hatchie's Thomas. They kind of resemble a lot. On defense for the Tigers tonight, it has been number 30, E.J. Clark. He has been all over the field. He has made some big hits, and uh, you have seen him really dominate on the defensive side of the line. Yeah, 12th, 12th grader, and uh, he's uh, been all over. Every time you call a play, his number's been shouted. You know, we've got a 35-6 to six game, Brandon, but if you look at the stats from the first half, rushing-wise, Randolph County carried the ball 13 times for 75 yards. Ohachi. 28 carries for 117 yards on the ground. Randolph County with 69 passing yards. Ohatchee with 28 passing yards. Randolph County was three of six with one interception in the uh, through the air. Ohatchee two for four with one pick. That was a pick six. Stats are close. We're looking at both teams are in the 130 yard mark range, and that's all. But the turnovers are the separation. That's it. That's the separation is the turnover margin, and that is killing Ohatchee right now. So we're about set to start this third quarter. Remember, Randolph County won the toss. They deferred their option to the third quarter, so they're going to get the football to start this third quarter. And I, I don't think I'm saying anything that anybody that's watching this game doesn't already know. Randolph County, if they score here, I, I think it's Katie bar the door. I think Ohanchi's defense has to find a way to get a stop. They do, and I, and I think they will. I really do. Uh, Ohatchee is just one of these teams that just does not give up. I've watched them for years, and uh, they're going to give it all they've got for four quarters. So if uh, they can come out here and get a stop, uh, get the ball back and do what they do best and put it in the end zone and run their offense. And, but they might have to do it a little bit uh, faster than what they prefer, but they've got the playmakers to do it. Yep. Second half, clear skies, 64 degrees, calm winds as we get set for the second half kickoff. Got a little fall feel in the air tonight for sure. It does. I wish I had my $5 popcorn bucket, but I just have to do without. It'll be Harrell who will actually make that, yeah, Gage Harrell who is kicking it deep for the Ohatchee Indians back deep to receive the kick. Trey Terrell is back there for the Randolph County Tigers, and we are underway with third quarter action. Line drive kick. One of the upbacks feels it, falls, and falls on the ball for Randolph County quickly. So that is an effective little squib kick there for Ohatchee falling on the football. That was number 21, Jay Wright. So first down and 10 for the Tigers. You know, Grady, something we haven't talked about with this temperature falling as quick as it is, that uh, grass is going to get really slippery. The ball's going to get slippery. So we might see some more turnovers here We've, as the claim goes on. That's a good point, Brandon. We very well could see some more here in this second half. Randolph County ready to get going. As you see there, State Representative K.L. Brown is uh, bringing you this third quarter action here on the Friday Night Network. Harris Wortham going to go under center, and we're going to run out of a wishbone look again. The Tigers have ran out of a multiple formations offensively. They're going to try the running game, going to give it to Trent Lane. He's going to lower the head and have the boom lowered on him by Jesse Sellers. But gets a quick gain of about six yards on first down, maybe seven. Call it second down and three coming up for the Tigers. Trent Lane being the workhorse, picking up some good first down yardage. Now we're looking down with uh, second down and just a couple of yards to go, about three yards. Yeah, got it out to the 33-yard line, 34-yard line now. So second and three for the Tigers. And I'll be interested to see what they try to do here offensively on this drive. They put it up in the air down close just before halftime and had an interception. So we'll see what the Tigers will do. Wortham's going to turn, going to hand it off right up the gut and got close to first down yardage. Just a basic dive play there to Trent Lane, carrying the football another time for the Tigers. He's brought down by Jordan Lowe for the Indians. And Lane picking up the first down again. Like you said, with a little dive play right the middle, nothing fancy. Just uh, going to try to eat this puck up probably on the ground is what we're going to see. I'd be really surprised to see him go in there with it. Well, I think this is the kind of time of the game you line up and go man on mano a mano, so to speak, and say stop us if you can. That's right. And Hatch is going to have to step up in there and make some plays on defense. Well, stay out of that wishbone look once again for the Tigers. Wortham. Looks over the defense, 
just about everybody within five, six yards of the line of scrimmage. And there goes Aaron Knight. He's going to have it out across the 45, out just short of the 47-yard line. That'll be Sellers and Thomas combining on the stop for Ohatchee. Lane and Knight, Knight and Lane. They just keep pounding it and pounding it, picking up some positive yardage, and now we're looking at second down and three again, getting close to midfield. And that's an impressive way to open the third quarter for Randolph County. You're moving the ball, about seven yards a pop, and you are running clock. No hurry. <laughs> second down and three now. Ball at the Tiger, 46. Here is Prestridge. Or actually make that worth them. And he's going to turn, fake it, now give it. A little misdirection play and a good defensive play that time by Jesse Sellers. Drops Trent Lane in the backfield back at about the 44-yard line. So that'll be a loss of a couple. And that'll bring up third down and call it five to go for the Tigers. And just like that, O'Hatchie's got them third and about four to go. And Sellers with a great open field tackle on Wortham. And if O'Hatchie can get a stop here, they might be able to do something. It is a must stop on this drive. Can't afford to give up a score. They really need the football. Randolph County's been able to burn over two and a half minutes on the drive so far. Here is a wishbone set another time. Third down and five at the Tiger 44-yard line. Worth them. Nothing fancy there. Give it to Lane coming around on the left side. He's going to be hit, going to be dropped. As no one gets the first one to hit him. And also to finish out the deal there is Dominique Thomas. And that is a stop for the Ohatchee Indian defense. Will force the Tigers to punt it away. And that's what I would do. I'd turn it away. I'm really surprised. You know, Richard Bledsoe, the 12th grader, the 6'2", 310-pounder, they didn't run it right behind him. He had a good block on the line of scrimmage, and uh, they ran a little bit to the outside of him, and uh, Hatch was able to get in there and stop it. So it'll be Prestridge on to kick it away. Back deep will be Larry Noah. He'll stand back inside his own 20 around the 15-yard line. Prestridge, a good kicker for this Randolph County Tiger football team. Snap is good. Prestridge, no pressure. Gets it out. Boom, and kick. And no one's going to let that hit all the way in the end zone. So you are looking at a about a 53-yard kick by Prestridge that time. And Ohatchee will start it with 80 yards to go to get it in the end zone. I'd like to say the wind caught it, but there's no wind there. <laughs> that was just, he got all of that. That was a beautiful kick. So first down and 10 coming up for the Ohatchee Indians. They'll start it at their own 20-yard line. And See what they can make happen here, Brandon. They don't have a ton of time to waste when you're down 35 to six. Every possession matters and every play matters. Yeah, uh, Allward's gonna have to step in there and probably gonna have to make some throws. I don't think they can just rely on Thomas. Nobody split out wide. They'll run out of that Red Eagle offense. Gonna give it to Thomas this time. He's gonna go right up the middle, short gain, maybe a couple of yards. That's gonna be it brought down there by Jay Wright. So second down and only give him a yard out to the 21. Yeah, Thomas just trying to run it right up the middle there and it was only good for about a yard. So now we're looking about second down, maybe eight, second nine. Yeah, they'll come spot in for 21, second and nine now for the Indians. And you look up at that clock and you're already down inside eight minutes to go with the quarters. Thomas comes around to the right side. He's got room. Here's Thomas. Breaks out of there, and he'll have the first down and more. Up to make the stop is Trey Terrell. But Thomas with 19-yard gain out to the 40-yard line, and the Indians needed that. Yes, they did. Thomas comes barreling out of the backfield, and uh, it was nothing but open grass there for him. I thought he was going to break it loose, but uh, Randolph County was able to make the stop. Now we're looking at uh, balls on about the 40-yard line. Well, that's one thing I'm impressed with this Randolph County defense. Open field tackling is very good for this bunch. It is, because uh, he could have very well easily hit the end zone. Here's Harold, give it to Sellers, wrapped up by E.J. Clark. That's going to be a loss of a couple back to the 38-yard line, bring up a second and 12 for the Indians. Well, Hatch you trying to mix it up, get Sellers in there and get him some carries and uh, let Thomas rest for a minute, but uh, got behind the chains there, so now we're looking at second and long, second and 12, with 7-12 to go. All we're looking over to the sideline, still no real pace for Ohatchee right now. Not yet, I figured they might try to pass it some, but they're still trying to use their ground attack, Thomas and Sellers. Here's Allwood, Sellers in motion. Gonna fake it to him, now roll out. Here comes Clark, fired over the middle, tipped, and almost caught then. Getting a hand on it that time was Dante Davenport trying 
to get it out into the middle of the field, was trying to hit his tight end, Robert Adamson, and uh, that one almost picked by the Tigers once again. And your favorite player, E.J. Clark, was right there in his face, so I think that had a little bit to do with his uh, fourth row there and almost intercepted. Yeah, E.J. has just been a dominant force up on that line of scrimmage tonight for the defense for the Tigers. He's just created play after play, and he's also been an effective weapon on offense with a couple of catches in there for the Tigers. Now here's Alward going to look over again. The clock stops on that incompletion for the Indians. Still with only 6.46 to go, and now we've got confusion, and the Indians are going to have to burn a timeout. That'll come with 6.46 to go, third quarter, all Randolph County here on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer with our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums. Our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Back here from the Creek Bank for high school football tonight. Don't forget, join us live from the Gridiron in Oxford coming up at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Our guest lineup includes the head coach here at Ohatchee, Coach Scott Martin. He was the 2016 Friday Night Network Coach of the Year. And also Bill Smith, head coach for the Munford Lions, will be joining us, the Lions, all over Dadeville tonight. So Coach Smith has got his team playing well tonight. They'll be our guests coming up live from the Gridiron this Tuesday night. 7 p.m. Here is all we're going to run a little pitch out to Thomas and nothing doing. He is going to be hit for a loss and dropped right there up to make the stop is Donta Davenport and that's going to bring up a fourth down and 11 and the Indians are going to have to kick it away. Thomas had his speed going but he could not cut to the outside. Randolph County was right there waiting on him and now we're still looking at fourth and behind the stick. Yeah, fourth and 11 we'll call it just shy of the 40 and it'll be Jesse Sellers kicking it deep to Prestridge. Here is the snap. It is a good one. Sellers handles it cleanly and gets it out of there. That's a nice kick by Jesse Sellers. Prestridge is going to let that one bounce. And it's going to be down, down about the 26-yard line of Randolph County. So that's where the Tigers will take over for their second possession here in the third quarter. And uh, we've got half the third quarter gone. And two for one possession by each team. Quarter's half over. Both wow. teams running the football. A punt and a punt. They're both stopping each other. I figured Ohatchee would probably open up the pass a little bit, but uh, they're still going with Sellers and Thomas, and uh, time's running out on the Indians. Yeah, it's moving rather quickly right now for this Indian football team. Tigers back in action on offense once again. First down to 10, down at their own 26-yard line. Wortham again under center. They go right back to that wishbone set. Will the Tigers. And they're going to hand it off and upended right across the line of scrimmage that time. They hand it off quickly to Jay Wright, and he hadn't got much as he is taken down immediately in there. Combs, I think, stuck ahead in there. The and it'll be second and eight. Oh, uh, I think they know the time's a ticking, so they're putting it, putting it down on the All line right now. We got our heat timeout. Comes with 5.53 remaining in the third. Randolph County still dominates this one. It is the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Talladega County Exchange has four locations to serve hunters and farmers. Talladega, Midstate Co-op in Columbiana, and St. Clair Farmers Co-op in Pell City and Asheville. We have a huge selection of hunting supplies, as well as feed, seed, fertilizer, and chemicals. Our Pell City store is a certified Hoyt dealer and archery center, while Columbiana has a full-line small engine repair shop. So come by our quality co-op stores today and check out our down-to-earth values. You'll be glad you did. Heat timeout, wrap it up here at Ohatchee, second and nine when we get back underway. Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele here live from the Creek Bank in Ohatchee. And the Tigers will be looking at that second and nine. And officials will mark this ready for play, and we are ready to roll with it. This time the Tigers will spread it out. They'll come out of that wishbone for the first time here in the third quarter. Wortham operating out of the shotgun. Got Aaron Knight in there, end around this time. 
coming for the Tigers and some positive yardage across the way as Andrew Prestridge takes it out of that receiver position and moves it around the right side for a good gain for Randolph County. Yeah, Prestridge showing his speed a little bit, made it to the outside, and now we're looking at third and short. Allward on the stop, and he got up a little slow over there, the starting quarterback for the Ohatchee Indians, and now the officials are going to blow the whistle down, and I think Grayson Allward is going to have to come off the field here for Ohatchee, and we got a Allward having to check out, I think. You don't want to see your quarterback coming out. So might have got his bell rung a little bit on that, lowered the head and made that hit over there on Prestridge. So it is third down and a yard now for the Tigers as they'll bring it back up to the line of scrimmage here. Line of scrimmage at 35 for Randolph County. Here is Wortham under center. He's going to take and hand it off and have it his first down and more. That's going to be Aaron Knight on the carry. And he's got a first down for the Tigers. Nothing fancy there, just handing it off and letting your offensive line do the work and picking up the first down, keeping them sticks moving, and most importantly, keeping the clock going. Uh, they're working down there on the field with Allward right now. I'm sure that's uh, taking the, the proper precautions with the concussion. Yep, concussion protocol, I would think, is what they're kind of checking in for right now, and that could force a backup into action at the quarterback position for Ohatchee when they get the ball back if Allward is not able to come back in the ball game. Randolph County, I set this time behind Wortham. Turn, give it to Lane, right up the gut. No, make that night running right up the gut, running hard. He'll have about four, maybe five yards before he is corralled by the Ohatchee defense. That is Bailey Graham making the stop that time for the Indians. That was a good stop by Graham. Uh, Lane got right there, right past the line of scrimmage, and they stood him up, but still picked up about four yards. And we got about second and six, six, second down and seven to go. So second down for the Tigers. Ball out at the Tiger 42-yard line. And we're about to roll under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. I set once again for Wortham. Prestridge and Trey Terrell split out wide to the left, but it's a running play. Trent Lane's got it, got a hold. He's going to have his first down and more as he is inside Indian territory down to the 45-yard line. And once again, on the stop across the way is Bailey Graham, who just came in for Allward on the defensive side of things for Ohatchee. Great run by Lane, picking up the first down. Ohatchee trying to arm tackle. Uh, got Ohatchee back on their heels a little bit. Look a little winded. So the Tigers starting to really dominate this one with the ground game and they're just grinding things out and as you said wearing down this Indian defense. First and ten inside Indian territory back to that wishbone look for the Tigers. Here's Wortham turn fake it now hand it to Knight off a right tackle big hole he's gone nobody going to catch him and the Randolph County Tigers I think just soft this one away they lead it 41 to 6. Wow. Knight just busting through the hole there. Ohatchee just had no answer for him. Got Ohatchee back on their heels, and I don't even think he was touching. He strolls in the end zone for the score with 3.12 left in the third quarter. And Aaron Knight with the big run that time for the Tigers. And looks like it'll be a, a Tigers, not the same Buckhurt, the kicker, back on to attempt the extra point. And I think Randolph County may be one man short. Now they get the extra man sprinting onto the field. That's about the only thing the Tigers have done wrong tonight. That's about it. They are playing some top-notch football tonight on the road. Kick is up by Hurd, and that one's good. 42 to six. Tigers dominating here on the Friday Night Network game of the week. Talladega County Exchange has four locations to serve hunters and farmers. Talladega, Mid-State Co-op in Columbiana, and St. Clair Farmers Co-op in Pell City and Asheville. We have a huge selection of hunting supplies, as well as feed, seed, fertilizer, and chemicals. Our Pell City store is a certified Hoyt dealer and archery center, while Columbiana has a full line small engine repair shop. So come by our quality co-op stores today and check out our down-to-earth values. You'll be glad you did. Randolph County marches it down the field, cash it in from the 46-yard line. That was Aaron Knight out of the wishbone, takes it the distance, and Randolph County ups the lead now over the homestanding Ohatchee Indians. And 
I think this will make a lot of people around the area stand up and take notice of this Randolph County football team. This team is for real, Grady. They are doing whatever they want to do. Run it, pass it. Mistake free football, only seen a handful of penalties, and even if you take away the old hatchy turnovers, uh, if this was, it would still be Randolph County up by three scores. Yeah, it would still be a dominant performance by the Tigers. No doubt about it. Their defense has been as dominant as the offense has been, as Prestridge will hit it. And that one's going to hit and gets by Noah and will roll into the end zone. So the Indians will take over at their own 20 yard line. First down and 10 and Allward able to get back in there at the quarterback position. So good to see him able to get back in the ball game for the Indians. Would also like to thank the following producer for the Ohanty High School varsity football, Chiho Bay. So it'll be first down and 10 for Ohanty. And O'Barry Memphis Church. As the Indians will try to get something going offensively. They look great on the first drive of the night and were able to move the football a little bit in that first half. But since then, it has been a shutdown defense for the Randolph County Tigers. And now we're going to have, I believe, a penalty flag coming in and potentially some motion or perhaps we've got a timeout on the field. It is going to be taken by Randolph County. While we've got a timeout, my partner here, Brandon, still knows just a little bit about uh, the weather and I uh, understand that while we've been on the air doing football on a perfect night, we've got some weather coming this way because Irma has taken a little bit more of a turn in our direction. Yeah, Grady, uh, you know, it's a category four. It's running about 14 miles per hour. Uh, well, they thought it was going to kind of hit right there to the uh, west of Miami. Now it's going a little bit further to the west and going to come up through the Keys and then the, the projected path, you know, it's going to drop down to a tropical depression when it gets around the Gainesville, Florida area, and it's going to skirt right across uh, northeast Alabama. So we're going to be still on the weaker side of the storm, but we're still going to see probably some winds at about 30 miles per hour with about five inches of rain. And that should be on us about uh, Monday? Monday night. Monday night, so be prepared for that weather. That'll be coming our way on Monday night as Irma takes a little bit more of a westerly track and uh, going to be bringing us a lot of rain. Here is Ohachi back to work, and that's Sellers. He's got a hold. Jesse Sellers breaks one tackle, can't break the second as he gets out across the 40-yard line, and he is brought down there by Dante Davenport, and it'll be first and 10 for the Indians, and boy, they needed a big play in the worst kind of way. They did, and gave it to their playmaker, Sellers. He's been trying to get some wiggle room all night long, and he found him a little hole. I'm just uh, thinking caught Randolph County right there on the back of their heels there for a second, and might be looking at the scoreboard, but uh, Ohachi moving the stick. Here's Allward, fake it to Sellers this time, roll to his left, got pressure coming, pressure coming from the backside. Got Sellers open over here on the backside, though, gets it to him, and he is going to be tripped as Dante Davenport makes the stop again. Kind of almost a soccer-style takedown right there. <laughs> it was. Uh, Sellers got, he was wide open. Uh, Randolph County was right there in the quarterback space, and he, was, he knew Sellers was open, and he got it out there to him, and uh, Sellers is uh, fired up right now. Got four yards, so it'll be second down and six coming up for the Indians as we roll toward the two-minute mark here of the third quarter. And Auburn did a good job of keeping the play alive that time long enough to get enough time to get the ball back out. And a good throw to Sellers here on the backside. He's right where he's at. Sellers will stay in the backfield alongside Auburn. He's going to get the carry this time, and Sellers going to be hit immediately. And fights for yardage, just not going to find any there as the entire Randolph County defense arrives with a vengeance up off the bottom of the pile is Jay Wright for the Tigers. And just like that, it's a third and long, third and six with a minute 47 to go. So third down now. And call it about six yards to go from the Indian 47-yard line, minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Where is Thomas at? I haven't seen him on this drive. Looks like they're trying to go with a little more speed, perhaps. Here is Sellers going to take the carry around left end, cuts it back and stacked up over there by the Tiger defenders once again. That Randolph County defense very, very stingy as a host of Tigers in on that stop up off the bottom. Of Ontario Hester was there early on as a host of other defenders as well, and it's fourth down. Once again for Ohachi, about six to go as he got a yard. Yeah, Sellers was like the one-man gang out there. Uh, they're going to put it in probably in some more playmakers' hands. I think when they see number two on the field, they know he's going to get the ball, and now they are starting to cover him up a little bit. 
Now Noah will trot back out on the field, and Oliver will come out, and it looks like Ohatchee's going to boot this one away. They're not going to go for it from the 48-yard line. They're going to elect to kick the ball back to Randolph County here late in this third quarter. Sellers will kick it, and they barely get the snap off. They do, and Sellers kicks it out of there. Another nice kick. Prestridge calls for the fair catch, and he will make it down at about the 24-yard line. So Tigers will have it with 27 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. First down and 10 from their own 24. You know what I need, Grady? Some hot wings from the gridiron. Hot wings from the gridiron? I'm cold. It is cool out here tonight. I guess we're just not used to cool weather. 60, Mid-60s right now. Feels a lot cooler than that here on the creek bank. Nights like this, I wish I had some hair. <laughs> I don't think there's anything either one of us can do about that one, brother. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Tigers. They're on 24. We'll run one play here, and that probably will get us to the end of the third quarter. Barring a penalty or a score, they're going to hand it around right in, and a nice gain that time out to about the 30. So it'll be a gain of about six yards or so as running the ball that time, Ontario Hester. And that'll be the final play of this third quarter. Randolph County puts one more score on the board. They dominate this football game headed to the fourth quarter here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Apothecary, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPC.com. Welcome back here to Ohatchee, where the Creek Bank finds the Randolph County Tigers dominating tonight. 42 to 6. Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele. And I think, Brandon, you got a little more breaking weather news. I do. Uh, Governor Kay Ivey has just issued a state of emergency for ahead of Hurricane Irma uh, tracking this way. So a state of emergency issued here in Alabama ahead of Irma, which will should impact our weather about Monday night. So enjoy the weekend. I know you do for snow, you get milk and bread. Do you do that for hurricanes, too? Yeah, you have to prepare for the hur hurricanados. Hurricanados, mm -hmm. okay. But uh, that's a powerful storm, and certainly everybody in the path of that needs to be aware. Yes, they do, Grady. And, uh, you know, the evacuees are going to the Talladega racetrack, and now I'm not so sure if that might be the, <laughs> not a safe place for them to be. Well, yeah, a lot safer than South Florida. For sure. Randolph County with it, second down and four. Going to hand it off, big gain, and a first down picked up by Ontario Hester, I believe, as he is upended. I don't know if that was Alward or Sellers who got him, but it'll be first down and 10 for the Tigers. That moves the chains and keeps the ball in the hands of Randolph County. And you know right now, they're just looking to run some clock and move the ball and, and just kind of go home with a win tonight. A big win, too, Grady. This is huge. I was not expecting a 42-6 blowout on the creek bank. I don't think anybody was expecting the score. I, I don't know that anybody's shocked by who's leading. I, I think folks, a lot of folks thought Randolph County was really good coming into this season, and, and they've certainly proven to be that, but I think everybody's going to be shocked by the by the score. Well, I sure am, and that's going to really open the eyes for Weaver. It's a dead ball. False uh, start. Piedmont. This way. Still first down. Yeah, that Piedmont Randolph County game next week sets up to be <laughs> a doozy down on frog level. I know who I'm going for. I think I know who's going to be a good one. So first and 15 now for the Tigers. Wortham will go up under center again. A wishbone set in the backfield. And Wortham's going to turn, hand it off once again. Lane's got it, bounces it to the left side. And he'll have the five yards back, maybe an extra yard or so. That's going to be about it. It'll bring up second down and long for the Tigers. Thomas makes the stop over there. Also assisting on it for Ohatchee was Kevin Williamson, number 18. You think Trent Lane's just an 11th grader. Now they, they, he is something. He is stout. I'm still wondering where Thomas is for Ohatchee. He's know, made it? the stop there. He's still, he's still out there. Number seven right there. There he is. 
Second down and nine now for the Tigers after that gain of six on first down after the motion penalty. Here's Wortham, and we got another motion penalty coming up. Jimmy Buckaloo with the laundry in the air. So motion is the penalty against Randolph County. So as we look ahead to uh, high school next week, how about college football tomorrow? Three more big games tomorrow, including Georgia and Notre Dame. I think Georgia's at Notre Dame tomorrow. Oklahoma is at Ohio State. And Auburn is at Clemson. Big games. Georgia, Ohio State, and I'm going to have to go with Clemson on that Auburn game probably. Couldn't argue with any of those picks. Just because they're at home. Uh, Death Valley, a tough place to play as we've got to reset the clock. Jimmy Buckaloo says, let's get it right now. Let's wind it, and we're ready to roll with 10-15 here in the fourth quarter. Second and 14 now for the Tigers. Back at their own 33-yard line. Here is Wortham, turn, hand it off, and there goes Lane, runs into his own man, bounces it outside, and now the play going to be strung out across the way. Good defense that time for the Ohatchee Indians. Yeah, Lane yeah. ran up the back end of his own offensive lineman there, but tried to cut it to the outside, and Ohatchee was sitting there waiting on him. Now it's third and long. But, uh, I don't think they're doing anything fancy, just trying to eat up some clock here. Williamson makes the stop. So 13 yards. The Amount needed to be gained by Randolph County to pick up another first down. Wortham looks over the defense again, a wishbone set for the Tigers. And again, the give, the give to Lane, and he's got room. He's going to be tackled short of the first down. Oliver gets him down on the ground out at the 45-yard line. That'll be about two yards or so short of the First down marker, so Randolph County will kick it away. Prestridge will come on to do the honors. That was a real good run run by Lane. You know, that just goes to show you how powerful Randolph County is because Oanji knew they were going to run the ball, and he still picked up a bunch of yards. Knew, knowing it and doing something about it are two different things. That's true. When you're playing a, a really good football team, and I, I think we all are in agreement here tonight that we're seeing a good football team in this Randolph County team. Big kick by Prestridge right. again. Goodness gracious. And that's going to get into the end zone. So Ohatchee will have it out at the 20-yard line. And uh, Prestridge is showing quite a leg in the punting game. With my Weaver mass right, that was over 50 yards. Yeah. Yeah, he was at the 45, so that's a 55-yarder that he'll get credit for there. And, you know, we said before this game that the loser would come out of here with some head scratching to do. And certainly Ohatchee's got to look at some things. But this is still a good football team and a good program. And, and a loss in this region, that's certainly something you can overcome. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there's just so many good teams in here. You know, I'm watching you know, Ohatchee on side. They really look a little discouraged right now. But uh, Coach Martin will get them, get them picked back up and get them ready for region play. Yeah, and you kind of wonder if anybody comes through this region undefeated. They may. Uh, but there's just so many big games left to go for all of these teams. Here is a good run on first down by Thomas. And he's got it down the far sideline and finally wrestled out across the 40, out near the 42, 43 yard line for Dominique Thomas. Dante Davenport gets him down. I was waiting on Thomas. There he is. Yeah. Big, 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 big run. First down. It might be a little, little short, but. So that'll move the chains for the Indians. Give them some good field position out across their own 40, out at about the 42 yard line. I wonder what old Hatchie might. Have installed got here. Sellers in at quarterback now. Jesse Sellers, he drops the football and now picks it up and is uh, going to be on the ground. And E.J. Clark has got it. And the Randolph County Tigers will force the fourth turnover of the night by the Indians. Wow, you cannot put the ball on the ground. Of course, what we said earlier, that's not the reason why the score is 42 to 6. But still, you can't just do that when you're trying to get back into the ball game. Last time the Indians gave up this many points back in 2015, taking on the Welburn Panthers. And they gave up a, a lot of points. And uh, it's been a very dominant performance tonight by the Randolph County Tigers. They gave up 42 in 2015 in that game, and they're in danger of seeing that total broken here tonight because Randolph County's got it after the turnover inside the Indian 40-yard line. I wonder if O'Hatchie can put a stop up. Here's Wortham, wishbone set. Give it to 
the back, and he's going to be hit and stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Hit first there with a good defensive stick by Austin Duncan that time. And that was Antonio Morgan on the carry as Randolph County starting to substitute some players now. He's a 12th grader, so it's good to see him getting some carries. Second and nine coming up for Randolph County. Again, taking all the time in between plays they can, just trying to run this clock on out of and get out of here. Head on back down to Weedowie with the win. In the cold. Feels cool. Second down and nine. Give it to Trent Lane. Hit the backfield. Breaks the tackle. Now going to be tackled. Nope. Breaks another tackle and stays on his feet down the sideline. Goes Trent Lane, and he's got a first down and more. He may have stepped out back up the field a little ways. Let's see how far he got. And the officials are going to say he did not step out of bounds. So Trent Lane, well, he looked like for all the world, Brandon, that he was stopped cold, and he turned that into a huge game. Six Ohatchee players, Grady, had hit their hands on him, and he still broke it loose down the sideline. That will make a head coach mad. Yes. First down and goal now from out at the 10-yard line for the Randolph County Tigers. Threatening again after another Ohatchee turnover. Wortham turns, gives it off to E.J. Clark. Powers his way down inside the 10 to about the 6 or 7. And actually, let's make that number 26 on the carry. Jonathan Prothrow, a 10th grader down at Randolph County. 10th grader, nice little power run trying to make something happen right there. Nothing fancy. Picks up about, what, about a yard? Give him about three down to the seven, second and seven. Second and goal situation for Randolph County. Graham on the stop that time for Ohatchee. As we go under six minutes to go in this one. Wortham. Going to call the play and running the ball right off and down close to touchdown yardage. Not quite, though. Down about the one-yard line. Cold timeout. That was Ontario Hester. We'll actually make that Jagger Anthony on the carry, and that will be the heat timeout with 544 remaining. When we come back, Randolph County will have it third and goal here on the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. We welcome you back out of the heat timeout. Hope you enjoyed our side-by-side, -side, keeping you right here at the stadium live while we go to commercial break. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele. As we continue here on the Creek Bank, Tallahassee clinging to a one-point lead over Hanley in the third quarter of that ball game, 14 to 13. Talladega and Cleburne County tied at 21 in the third quarter. Gardendale all over Pell City, 29 to seven tonight. And Ranburn having their way with Fayetteville tonight. 41 to 18 is the score. That one third and goal for the Tigers from down at the Indian two yard line. New quarterback in. That is Davis. And like a little mishandle on the snap, and going to be stopped short of the goal line is Demarcus Davis. So it'll be fourth and goal. We got a penalty flag on the play as well. Just another quick Irma update while we had the penalty. Uh, they're calling for 50 mile per hour winds up this way east of I-65. So it's getting worse the longer we stay. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. All sure right. Is. Still third serious. down. 50 mile an hour winds will cause some damage. So uh, everybody be aware of what's coming first of the week here. So now Randolph County go back to the wishbone. Davis under center, fumbles the football. 
tries to scoop it up, and it's going to be recovered by Ohatchee. So the Indians get the second Tiger turnover of the night. Fumble is recovered there by Aiden Simpson, number 40. For Ohatchee, they'll take over with 4.59 remaining in the football game. So some young players getting some play in time for Randolph County and turning the ball over there. Yeah, Ohatchee's not going to fall over and just give it to them. So it's good to see Ohatchee still fighting and clawing and pawing here. And, uh, with 4.59 left, maybe they can get a nice drive and put a score on the board. So first and 10 for the Indians, deep in their own territory. They have it out at about the six yard line. As that will be a new quarterback in the game and the handoff is right up the middle that time. Carrying the football is Cam McCombs, number 44. And he gets it out about the 12, so give him a gain of six. Cam Foshi has taken over at the quarterback position right now for Ohatchee. Cam Foshi. <laughs> so we've got Cam and Cam. It's the Cam show in the backfield. Boshi the quarterback, McCombs the running back, and we got a whistle. And I suspect some laundry on the field back there. New quarterback, probably a false start. Stops the clock with 4.24 to go with this one. And that most penalty is going to be stepped off against Randolph County. Oh, must have been an encroachment foul on got the defense. So. On the white that chain. should be very close to first down yard. It's like it now. Not, it's just, it's just short, so about a quarter of a yard or so to go for Ohatchee to pick up the first down. Be interested to see what Coach Martin's got to say about this Tuesday night. Yeah, we are set to join you live from the Gridiron, 7 p.m. here on the Friday Night Network. And Coach Scott Martin, one of our guests, as Cam McCombs bulls his way out across the 20 near the 23-yard line. And he's got a first down. Of course, Coach Bill Smith from the Munford Lions will be another guest. And uh, that'll be a contrast. Coach Smith's going to be thrilled. His Munford Lions up big over Dadeville tonight in Munford. And, of course, Coach Scott Martin got to be disappointed with the outcome tonight and the mistakes. He is, but he's been coaching a long time. So, I mean, he'll rally the troops and get them back up in there. Oh, no question. Very, very, very good football coach is Scott Martin. 340 remaining. Ball on the ground for Randolph for Ohatchee. Picked up, though, and Foshi's got it. He's going nowhere as he is going to be hammered down. Jonathan Prothrow making the stop for the Randolph County Tigers, and it'll bring up second down and long for the Indians. I think that do on the field's causing that ball to be slippery because they're both having a hard time holding on to it. Yeah, you can feel it on our rosters and all have gotten a little damp just laying here on the table. So we've had a lot of a lot of dew falling here near the creek. So you'll have that. Foshi out of the shotgun look, handed off to Combs, and Combs is going to find the going tough over on that right side. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be about it as the Randolph County defense closed down quickly on him up to make the stop Jagger Anthony. CB number 71 jogging off the field. Looks like they're putting in some new personnel. So it'll be second down and eight now. That gain, or make it third down and eight. The gain was a couple out to the 29-yard line. Ohanchi taking plenty of time in between plays as well. McCombs and Foshi in the backfield for the Indians, and Foshi drops it again, scoops it back up, and he is going to be hit down right about the line of scrimmage once again as the Tigers all over that on the mistake. Ontario Hester with the stop for Randolph County, and Ohatchee will have to kick it away once again here with just over two to go in the football game. Ohatchee has an off week this week, don't they? Coming up? Uh, I haven't looked. They may. I think they do. Now you get the bye week, so teams will get a break. We know Randolph County headed home to take on the Piedmont Bulldogs in a showdown on Frog Level next Friday night. There's a snap to Sellers. No pressure from Randolph County. Gets a nice spiraling kick out of there that's going to hit and go backwards. It takes a big Randolph County roll and knocked on further down by the Indians down to about the 40. He kicked it to the 50, and it yeah, had backspin on it. Yeah. We don't have no grub mark down there, and we dowie, do we? No. So I'm going to bring my $5 popcorn bucket well, with me. Well, we don't know where we're going to be yet, but... Yeah, that's one of the possibilities. Possibility. That's a possibility. Out at Weaver is a possibility. We will see where the uh, FNN game of the week will be. In fact, I'm 
feel certain we'll announce that Tuesday night, Tuesday night. at the Gridiron. Well, wherever we go, I'm bringing my popcorn bucket. Well, you're going to have to go get one first. I'm just tired you're of You're going to have to go to the Grub Mart. I'm first and 10, Randolph County. I could definitely use some hot wings from the Gridiron right now. Yeah. I'm cold. Hot something. First and 10 for the Tigers. 140 to go. And that, once again, is Demarcus Davis. And once again, we're going to have a penalty flag. So this one is kind of dissolved into a, a little bit of sloppy play the with team. substitutions coming in. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Yeah, everybody's a play in time. That's usually when I got my, got my showing right there with a minute left when it was a kind of a blowout. So Tigers. First and 15 from the 45. That really doesn't matter. They've dominated this football game tonight. Complete and total victory for the Randolph County Tigers here at Ohatchee. Davis hands it off. And running forward with it, I believe, was Jonathan Prothrow. Uh, so he goes over to left tackle. Gets about three yards. One touchdown, Grady. I just would not have believed that. Austin Duncan on the stop for Ohatch. One touchdown out of the Indians. Yeah, and that first drive was so impressive when they started and took it right down the field. It really looked like they were going to be unstoppable on offense. They did. That's what just kind of got me shocked. Second and 12 for the Tigers. Davis will line them up in the wishbone another time. Let the play clock tick down. We're under a minute to go now at 51 seconds. Here's Davis, turn, hand it off, right up the middle. Short gain to about the 39. And making the stop that time is Jordan Lowe. And it'll bring up third down now. And long for the Tigers. We'll have it down at the 40, so call it third and 10. With 28 seconds remaining, Randolph County has to run but one more play, and this one is in the books as a win for the Tigers here on the Creek Bank tonight. And... They're going to come over to the sidelines, and they do not have to run another play. So that is going to do it tonight here from Ohatchee. The final score, it's Randolph County winning at 42 to 6 tonight over the Ohatchee Indians. A big, big win for the Randolph County Tigers and an impressive one here on the road. We'll grab a timeout. Brandon and I will be back to wrap things up from here on the Creek Bank next. It is the Friday Night Network High School Game of the Week. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even mermuts. And we covered it February 3rd, 2016. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. When you're the boss, you need the right machines. The right machine is the new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR side-by-side. -side. Quality fit and finish, and all this cabin space. Maneuvers like you wouldn't believe. The new Kawasaki Mule Pro FXR, the strongest, because I said so. See the full line today at Talladega Cycle Sales on Highway 21 in Talladega or online at talladegacyclesales.com. Advantage Tire on Highway 202 is the trusted name for tires and wheels in the Anniston area. You'll find the best tire service around. Plus, they do brake work and alignments. It doesn't matter what you're driving, you'll find the best selection of tires or wheels to suit your needs at even better prices from local folks you've trusted for years. And Advantage Tire is well known for their fast 
fast, friendly service. Call ahead or just come on by and see Bruce and the pros at Advantage Tire on Highway 202 today. Big Daddy's Barbecue on Highway 21 is where Munford comes to eat. You'll always find delicious home cooking daily with fast, friendly service. Big Daddy's offers plates or sandwiches with all your favorite sides to choose from, specializing in wings, burgers, chicken, ribs, and barbecue. Open early, open late, six days a week. Come in with family or friends or call ahead and take it home. 256-358-9005. Big Daddy's Barbecue, proud supporters of the Munford Lions. Welcome back here to the Creek Bank. I am Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele. And tonight it has been all Randolph County. They dominate the Ohatchee Indians 42 to 6, Brandon. And it was a game that started out really well for Ohatchee with an impressive opening drive. And after that point, though, it was all Randolph County. Turnovers and excellent play by the Tigers just resulted in a dominant win. That's right, Grady. You know, when the kickoff first happened and uh, Ohatchee was able to make a nice drive down there, everything just kind of went downhill from there. Uh, just no answer for the Randolph County Tigers. You know? So I, I think everybody's surprised by the score. Everybody maybe not as surprised by who won. Thought that Randolph County had a good shot coming into this one. They go home to take on Piedmont next Friday night. That is a possibility of one place we may be. We're either going to be there or we're going to be in Weaver for Welburn at Weaver next Friday night here on the Friday Night Network. We'll let you know about that coming up first of the week. And uh, let's talk again quickly about Hurricane Irma as it continues to churn our direction. Yeah, Hurricane Irma uh, is expected to come into the uh, shores of Miami down there, but it's coming a little bit further to the west than they uh, anticipated, and that's, that spells trouble for us. And uh, they're expecting hurricane force winds all the way possibly up into Atlanta uh, now. Uh, so 50 mile per hour winds for us to what, east of I-65, uh, 35 mile per hour winds, five inches of rain, uh, power outages, uh, everything's possible right now, but you know that could change, but it looks like it's, uh, it's going to shift more to the west. It's not going east. It's shifting a little bit more to the west, and that spells trouble for us. So let's keep an eye on that over the weekend as Irma makes its way towards us. Final score once again tonight. Randolph County wins it here on the Creek Bank, and we appreciate you watching and enjoying the game with us here on the Friday Night Network. We will see you Tuesday night live from the Gridiron coming up at 7 p.m. here on the Friday Night Network, and again next Friday either in Weaver or in Weedowie for our Friday Night Network Game of the Week on next Friday evening. Good night, everyone, from Ohatchee.